Cheers, lads. Yeah. Great kickoff. Who owns it? Kicking us off there. We'll be back to you. In a, we'll be back to you in a bit for another tune or two. Cheers. Cheers, lads. Coming to us live there from a maturation room at Hinch Distillery. Welcome to the lock in. I'm Barry Chandler. We have a great night ahead uh, tonight. Uh, more whiskey, more crack, more tunes, more conversation, and uh, a fantastic chance to tour one of Ireland's newest, most exciting distilleries. And uh, I was getting a little pre-tour before we went live tonight and blown away by just the, the design, the quality, just the absolute aesthetic beauty of this distillery. Forget about the whiskey, that'll come later, but the beauty of it, it's unreal, it's gorgeous. So uh, looking forward to uh, having Jamie tour us around. So a uh, great night ahead of us. Let's know, let us know what's in your glass. What are you drinking? Where are you? Where are you joining us from? Whether you're in the United States, Ireland, further afield. Typically, we get Australia, Japan tuning in as they wake up this time in the morning. So let us know what you're drinking. Um, and uh, yeah, let me see. Uh, Michael Mullen is uh, joining us from Glasgow. Good morning from Glasgow, Glasgow Green Spot. Hudson Valley, New York. Lisa joining us. She got her, her hinge 10-year-old. Very good. And she might open her Method of Madness Mulberry. Very good. Very good. Um, Richard Agnew is an exiled Dungannon man in Ontario checking in. Great stuff. You'll be looking forward to seeing Hinge So. Jacksonville, Florida, Greg Anderson is here with us. Great to see you again, Greg. Thanks for joining. Steve uh, giving us uh, some cheers there. Great to see you, Steve, from Colorado. Johnny McNally is drinking Glendalock Single Pot Still. Great stuff, great stuff. So whether you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook or watching on Twitter, uh, as always, give us a like, give us a share so that more of your friends, more of your family can join in. Uh, have the crack. We're not locked into a pub. We're locked in virtually to our online get-together every Friday night. And it's a chance for us to uh, toast each other, toast our health, and get a bit more familiar with the distilleries and the whiskey brands that uh, the distilleries that we're going to visit when Ireland opens up again, and the brands that we can try and drink and enjoy right now without the need to leave our own home. Martin Purcell is drinking Black Pits in Limerick. Great stuff. And Stacey can't wait for the tasting. She's already broken into her hinge double wood and really enjoying it. Great stuff. Stacey crossed state lines to get her, her whiskey for tonight. Colleen is uh, drinking some Egan's Fortitude and Black Bush. Great stuff. Egan's Fortitude, of course, was on our lock-in last week. And uh, Belfast Whiskey Week. Couldn't, wouldn't miss a night like this. Paul there tuning in. <laughs> Happy Easter to this epic community, indeed. Thomas Turley, 
looking forward to Who Owns Ye. And you just missed Who Owns Ye playing the first opening song, but we'll be going back to Who Owns Ye for a few more tunes uh, uh, during the evening. So without further ado, uh, you don't want, you're not here to listen to me. You're here to uh, take a tour of Hinch and learn all about the great things that are happening there. So let me bring in my friend, Jamie Cotter, brand manager at Hinch Distillery. Jamie, how are you getting Good on? morning. Good morning, Barry. I was about to say good evening, but it definitely is good morning. It's now 10 past 12. So yeah, dedication to the cause. Is the best way of putting anything for the long dedication. There's not many people now at midnight sitting in a distillery in Ireland, I'd say. Yeah, listen, uh, when you're given the keys, uh, you make the most of it. So a lot of people think this is maybe a green screen. I would tell you now, it's, it's, it's really not. Um, so it's a pleasure to be with you and like give you the tour of the distillery as we, we come on board. And unfortunately, the doors aren't open just yet, but we're not far away from it. So I think this might be the first virtual tour of the distillery to happen. I think it is. I was looking online to see were there any other virtual tours, but I couldn't find any. I think we have a, a world first here now, the first first time Americans are seeing inside the distillery. Only the best for yourself, sir. First class with your turtleneck. Ah, sure, listen. A good distillery to go with the turtleneck. Never hurt. <laughs> Jamie, uh, help our audience understand where Hinch Distillery is, and then maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you came into your role and what you're doing at the distillery. Yeah, so Hinch Distillery is located just south of Belfast in a town called Balna Hinch. So you're talking maybe nine miles as the crow flies from the centre of Belfast. You can't miss it. If you know the route between Belfast and Newcastle to the Mourne Mountains, you have to go past our front door. And, you know, lovely stone building from the outside. You might have a picture be able to show people. You, you know, when this place is getting built, people were thinking it's a church. They didn't know what it was. It was mysterious. Now the local community know exactly what it is, and it's a pleasure that when people are now coming into our distillery shop, they're able to get an idea of what we're doing. So, you know, we are in the higher of County Down, we are in the middle of the fields, and it, it, you, you couldn't build a better distillery if you tried. You know, it's stone clad, it, it just fits in with the surroundings. I'm gonna pull up a picture of it here now for you. You shared so many great pictures and no better man for the, for the photography than yourself. Listen, you uh, we'll come back to that, yeah, but it is fair pleasure to be able to take the photos of this distillery and put it out there at the same time in all its glory. So what we're kind of seeing on the screen here at the minute is everything to the right hand side is our distillery and the stone building at the front is our distillery reception for our shop um, and where your tours would start and everything over to the left hand side at the back is our event spaces. You know, we are a distillery, but we can also cater for weddings, functions, and we have a lovely new brasserie restaurant just at the back of it called Hinge Brasserie. So, you know, we're waiting for lockdown to end to be able to open up the distillery as well as the bar and the restaurant and have people in for weddings, conferences, that sort of thing. It's a so stunning, it's yeah, there's there's yeah. another view now at the still house. Yeah, so that, that's from our courtyard, and that courtyard is going to lend itself to so many different things. Um, you know, the possibilities that we have there are endless, and that's the backdrop. And like later in the show, we'll, we'll take you around and you'll get to see the three cells. How long was has a Hinch Distillery been in planning? Um, a distillery like this doesn't pop up overnight. I feel like for as long as I've been involved in Irish whiskey, the few years I've been involved, I've been hearing about uh, the, the, the plans, but... This is a, a monstrous undertaking, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's enormous task, and it's with no bid that Terry Cross has managed to get it done. And especially construction during a pandemic says everything on his behalf that he was willing to push ahead and get it done. You know, no expense is spared. But it, it's been in the pipeline for a number of years. Terry has owned the Chateau in France now for 21 years in St Patrick's Day there, so he knows the drinks industry, and it has always been on his radar to create a whiskey distillery. And th this naturally is in the cleaning estate, that this is his property we're looking at. So what we're looking at quickly on the screen there is the mound at the back of his house overlooking the rolling drumlins of County Down. So that's the back of the distillery. And, you know, coming into work at 7 a.m. to get the sunrise is a pleasure to see it. But it's been, the distillery, sorry, has been going, planning for maybe think, six, seven years possibly. And then construction started in November 2018 with the ground being broke. Uh, and then the main building started going up probably in January, February of 2019. So, it, you know, it's come a long way. The stills went in of Christmas of 2019. They got brought in. And then we just started distilling here on the 9th of November 2020. I remember... Um 
sipping a, a whiskey as you uh, as you officially opened the distillery. What was that? Yeah, November, November last year, yeah. and there was a great great excitement. I'm sure in the area. Um, there's an incredible resurgence of distilling in Northern Ireland, isn't there at the moment? And Hinch now is 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 just another great example of reimagining re. -imagining, re bringing back the excitement and the, the the size and the scope of distilling that would have happened yeah. 60, 70, 100 years ago or more. We know, Fran Riley, that, you know, Irish whiskey was massive, the amount of the stories there was. And then you threw a stone's throw a number of years ago. There was two working distilleries. They kept the eye on the float. We were the 36th distillery to come on board back in November of 2020. And in Northern Ireland has an array of distilleries. But what I kind of say now is County Down is now becoming the new distilling capital of Ireland. You know, there's six working distilleries now in County Down alone, with a seventh coming on board potentially and talk of two others. So, you know, it, it, you talk about being from Cork. We're from not not Cork, away up in the north, but we're, <laughs> we're rolling the roost up here now, so we are. Jamie, when did you come on board? I, I, I'm actually going back before that. I remember I first met you at Whiskey Live, which would have been probably 2018 Seven. maybe. Um, 17 was it palace bar yes i would have met you before i had the hints distillery cap on as whiskey jack as some people might know the, the influencer or the blogger whatever you want to call it the passion of my life to talk about whiskey and yes i met you at that whiskey live and we ended up for a couple of flights um in the palace bar upstairs like the good times when you probably had 50 60 people in that small bar upstairs you know every year after whiskey live that's where we all meet the brand ambassadors, the brand managers, whatever you want to call them, as well as the punters. And that's where we get the, once we're finished at like, you know, what is it, 9 p.m. or something like that, it's, it's jackets yeah. off and go for a drink with yourselves and it's a bit more relaxed. But that's when I first met you. And then the second year would have been when I was working for Hinch at my first Whiskey Live in 2019. Did you grow up near the distillery or um, is yeah, this something I'm, that, you grew up pretty near, didn't you? I'm literally a stone's throw, Barry. I am a nine-minute drive from my house to here. I, before I came on early, I was actually thinking how many turns I need to take from when I leave the house to the distillery gate, and it's three turns. It's two left turns and a right turn, and it's, it's a straight road, basically, for those two turns, and I'm from front door to here, 10 minutes at the most, unless you get stuck behind a tractor, but, you know, it's, it's easy to roll out of the bed in the morning and come here. There, there's no having to fight the urge to lie in maybe, but when you come here and you get to play with all this behind you, with a camera in your hand, you get to do whiskey tastings. Like it, for me personally, dream come true to go from the blogger to the guy that now does all our media, does all our content, gets to do this with the likes of yourself, you know, yeah, listen. You'll it's... never be off duty. You'll always be on duty now and on call because you're so close to the distillery. It's like being in the distiller's cottage in Middleton back in the day. Yeah, listen. <laughs> That, that, that's the good thing that I'm allowed and Terry and like my bosses are more than happy for me to come in here at midnight. You know, some of the stories might not allow the guys to do this. I'm very lucky that the team that we have here, we want to show this place off. It's a spectacular venue. So why not? Let's open it up at midnight and show the people of the world what it looks like. I can't wait now to do this little tour around the distillery. Yeah. Um, but before we do that, um, help us understand what your role then is and all the hats that you wear at the distillery and I presume that that role will probably expand and change as things open up. But yeah, what what what, what do you get paid for? Uh, a bit of everything, Barry, is the best way of putting it. You know, we have a growing team here. When, when I first started, there was five or six of us in here and it was all hands on deck. You know, I started at the same time. I started a week, sorry, before our head distiller. So I've got that him longer serving than our head distiller, Aaron Flattery. But it, it really is all hands on deck. You know, I'm very lucky that I get to do marketing. I get to do digital marketing. I get to do events like this. I get to travel the world when it opens up again to talk to people in person and face. You know, I love Zoom to bits, but there's nothing better than talking to you face to face. But it, it, it's a bit of everything, Barry. It really is fingers in every pie and enjoying life. You know, every day is different in here. I could have a camera one day. Or there's days like, you know, when we first got the bottle online, these might see later up and running, it was with buying and help production um, and in whatever way I could. And the team here, production team, are very, very good to me that if I want to ask a question to expand my whiskey knowledge, it's, they'll take me to the larger ton, they'll take me to the mash ton, you know, 
bit of a bit of a funny one was I got to do my first gravity test the other day. So open up your tanks and take a dip with Aaron. And he may do that every day, but for me, that, that it's a new one for me. And as the whiskey geek, the whiskey nerd, you, you get to do that really small, minuscule thing. But for me, it's like you know, walking around, bouncing around, and looking at me going, okay, then fair enough, whatever. That's but brilliant. Every day is yeah. different. So like if we take today, um, I got to launch Crafting Cast, which we'll talk about. But that's been a year in the pipeline. And trying to keep your mouth shut for a year to family and friends is the hardest thing you can do. And I know friend Riley, you take some of the, the bloggers that like you know fill up a causeway there is going, what have you got coming? What have you got coming in? You're just trying to go <laughs> for me, it's, it's it, it really is all hands on deck and it can go from marketing and digital mark, you know, it is a bit of everything. But my main job is to do the content and then do the brand management, make sure everything's on point and get the message out there to the likes of yourselves. You have a, a tremendous reputation in the whiskey world in Ireland, Jamie. Um, from the moment I first met you, it was clear that everyone else had or, already met you, knew you, knew about your interest and passion for the whiskey world. And there's lots of great comments coming in from people like Dave Cummins and Lauren McMullen there who are just um, toasting you. And, and it, it, you, you've always been just so kind and, and, and with your time and your and sharing and just being a, a real gentleman. And uh, it's great to see now that you're in a job in the industry that you're loving. It's uh, it's lovely to see it. Yeah, I, I take, like, I really do appreciate the feedback that from that. And but I take that from the likes of Lauren. I take that from the likes of Dave and Joe McGowan. You know, Joe McGowan for IDL was the first brand ambassador that I really got to know in Belfast. But the knowledge and the time that they give me is only fair that I start giving it back to other people. So if people are messaging me, I'm more than happy to pick the phone up and talk to you. And, I, you know, this community that we have in Irish Whiskey, Every distillery talks to each other. There's not many distilleries that won't. We can pick the phone up to another distillery and have a chat all day long with them and get a bit of help. And it's it's the same with the brand ambassadors. You just couldn't fault them. So, you know, if you want to call them peers or whatever, colleagues from another distillery, it's a pleasure. And I can see Lauren's um, comment on that. And no doubt I will get some grief off her tonight because it's only fair that <laughs> Lauren... Um, and I'm just looking on the screen. She hasn't said the tasting notes just yet, but I'm sure they'll come in at some point from Lauren. She's saving herself until we start tasting, yeah. The um, if, like the, the American audience, uh, if you haven't yet been to Ireland, you haven't yet experienced the, uh, the slagging, the hurling of abuse that's meant purely out of love and affection. And if you're not hurling abuse at people, you're not in any way... Uh, interested in them or like them or have any time for them so uh you'll see lots of uh slagging and insults being thrown in the comments and they're all uh full of heart full of heart we wouldn't have it any other way twitter is absolutely fantastic and as much as we wind each other up and you know we can have so much fun but at the same time it's a very serious platform that we can get the message out there but like that, that's where I got to know a lot of people on Twitter. I think that's where I first spoke to yourself via Twitter, that sort of thing. Omar dying in court. You know, it makes the world, it, the world is a big place, but social media makes the world a lot smaller. And to be able to speak to you for a couple of years online and everybody else, and then meet yeah. the likes of with you live is just absolutely exceptional to be able to put a face to the name. What excited you about this distillery apart from the fact that it took you three clicks of your wheel to get there but what there are other brand opportunities whiskey opportunities distillery opportunities opening up presumably uh, yeah. not too far from where you grew up but was there something that drew you to to hinge yeah so like it, it, uh, we have to take kind of a step back to how i got the job and the person that helped me get the job it's, his name's michael morris and a lot of these might know him formerly of like idl um and the quiet man and it was actually Belfast Whiskey Club with Paul Kane. Um, I wasn't going to go that night to Belfast Whiskey Club, and I got a couple of messages going, please just come down. So if you know me, I go to all these events always with a full camera in hand. You know, it's never just a mobile phone. It has to be a full camera. So I went down to Belfast Whiskey Club that night not knowing what was on tasting or anything, and I walked in, and I had seen the bottles on the table and went, they look Fairly interesting, you know, it's a bespoke bottle, it's unique, you know, for us to emboss, and we'll, we'll talk about that later, but when I came in, I couldn't help but look at it, and then Michael Marsh happened to be there, and I've known Michael Marsh for a number of years, from meeting at Whiskey Live in London to Whiskey Live in Dublin, and Michael has time for everybody, one of the most pleasant guys you can meet, and that night, the owner, Terry Cross, was dying at Belfast Whiskey Club as well, and this was an exclusive tasting, 
this tasting hadn't happened anywhere else. I think the only other one that might have happened would be Japan that Michael was in. Um, and we sat down and we were going through this and I'm going, my brain is just going, this is getting built a stone's throw from me here. What's going to kind of happen? And I get talking to Michael and I get brought in on a three month contract, really just to get their social media up and running and see where I could help. And I just got the head stuck in and just went for it and made sure that those three months I worked nonstop and done as much as I could. And the more I learned from Terry Cross to Michael and my direct manager, Derek Hardy, who played a big pivotal role in what you see in these bottles. He was, it was him and Terry sat around the desk when Hinch first started. And just the people, the wealth of knowledge we have, the characters we have and what we're doing here going forward, just screamed to me, this is, this is the story I want to work for. You know, I, I could potentially go and knock on a lot more doors, but this to me was, do you know the, the saying, you know when you know? Yeah. That yeah. was really the case of this. This just was, if they would have said you could work for free, I would have taken it. Now, if Terry's listening in a minute, I don't actually do that anymore. <laughs> but th that's, the, that's the point where it comes. And it's like, I, I, I had a really long day today up, get ready for Craft and Cast. But we're sitting here at midnight because this is a passion. This is a dream come true for me. And there's nothing better to be able to be the person that sits here and goes, this is my distillery. You know, like I'm the king of the castle tonight. Going. And that's where the smile on my face comes from. It's just, it's, it's unique. You know, every distillery now in Ireland is slightly different. And that's where the new characters for these distilleries are going to come from. And for me, it's just, it's, I, I see Paul there with the eyes. That Paul is, is there, yeah. That basically means I still haven't given Paul his brown envelope for getting me the job for introducing me. <laughs> I'm sure he'll sure drive up and say something. It's hard not to feel the passion that you have. It's hard not to get excited. My my heart's racing a little bit when you start talking about it because I know what you mean. I know what you feel when you 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 know when you know, like you said. And um, there there are no there's never been more whiskey brands on shelves all around the world. Irish whiskey brands, and yeah. I'm looking for the people behind the whiskey, you know, the people who work in the industry, who work in the distilleries like this, like you now, Jamie, to say, and I'm so excited, I'm so passionate because I'm going to latch on to you and then you're going to tell me what I should know and what I should learn and what I should pay attention and what I should drink. And I, I think that's something that is clear to so many of our audience, even a grumpy cat. Uh, we've never had a cat on before, but here we go. Grumpy cat saying this kind of dedication is going to take Irish whiskey to the next level. I 100% agree with it. It's just so inspiring to see it. So part, part of our motto, like Strapline, is distilled by the bold characters, everything. And what I want to do here is show the characters of this place, you know, from our distiller, Emma, to our head distiller, to, you know, maybe the Grindsman, because our Grindsman, Mick, is a big, bubbly character. And as much as I can show the brands every day, people will learn about the brands, but they want to buy fully into it. They want to see the distillery. They want to see the stuff going on. And I guess that's where I can take it from when I was blogging. The bits that I didn't get to see that I wanted to know, sending the messages going gives a bit of information. I kind of still have that head on that going, well, let's let's take that out and show those things. You know, like so when the production guys are at the spirit safer, when they're dying at the bottling line, when we're casking, you know, we, this is the start of our journey. And people are now starting to come on board, you know. So those characters are going to come through. And if I shine through and Aaron shines through and Michael shines through. That's a testament to us that people are buying into us for the whiskey and everything else. 100%, 100%. It's so great to see it. And I think the last year has brought, despite our inability to be in person, I don't think more people have ever had a chance to hear from those in the world of Irish whiskey because of how you've been able to come across to us virtually and digitally and, and, and share the passion and share tours like this. Um, maybe more people than ever now are going to get a chance to, uh, are, 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 are now inspired to visit once the world opens up. Now they've had a chance to connect with the likes of yourself and all the other yeah. cast the characters throughout the world of Irish whiskey. There's definitely something to be said for zoom and Streamyard like yourself and YouTube and Facebook. It definitely opens the world up. But again, we go back to it's just not as good as seeing each other in person. Right. And like, yeah. I know yeah. a lot of brand ambassadors that love Zoom. For me personally, like as much as I love talking to people, like before I come online tonight, it was a, a bit of the fear, shall we say? It's like right, better get the head in gear. But in person, you can have the crack. But people are going to see the world for what it is and what Ireland has to offer. 
Um, you know, we want to put Hinge Distillery on the map, and we are the closest distillery to Belfast at the, at the current minute. And we know Fine Rightly doing things like this in America, talking to your audience, it's going to then bring them to our social media or whatever it is, and then they're going to buy into it. And, you know, you want to get the bus load and the plane load over, and we're going to talk about that at some stage. I don't, <laughs> think, you've been any, I don't think you've been to any distillery in the north yet, have you? Nope, no, I haven't. So, so I'll get in there straight away. Forget Brendan at Cologne. You have to go off the motorway to him, and it's a bit further. And don't be going to Lauren up the north. We're the closest. <laughs> straight up the motorway, and I'll open this place up for you. So this should be your first distillery you All come right. to in the north. We'll fly into Belfast um, with well, the hinge well, plane. Lauren, okay. Lauren now has offered us in Bushmills. She said she's going to paint a plane, a, a paint a plane with the Bushmills colours and fly us over. So you'll have to top that somehow with some uh, with some hinge investments. We, we'll do that, and then we'll pick you up in the staff car at the same time. <laughs> Fair enough. You have to pick up a hundred of us, though. Yeah, listen, that's, I'm sure we'll get you in one way or another. Um, I have so many questions about the distillery. I have so many questions about um, what you're making, the whiskey you're making. Uh, I'm dying to get a taste going. Um, okay. What if we went to the lads for another tune? Um, I see them in the background there getting ready, uh, leaping up to attention as soon as they heard uh, that they're coming on. <laughs> they're, they're currently locked in a room with a load of whiskey, so I better be careful. Yeah, I can see them taking things off the shelves there and putting them in their pockets, so I'll let you know how many they take. Um, no so worries. why don't we um <laughs> we'll go for a quick tune and then we'll we uh, we'll do a little tour, will we? Yeah. So if we pop off to them, I'll get the the height of technology ready to do a little walk around. So like magic, Perfect. I'll disappear this way. Great stuff. We'll see you in a minute, so Jamie. All right, let's go to who owns you in the maturation room. How are you, lads? Hello. Hello. How's it going? The There's a few bottles missing off the shelves there, a few dark colored bottles missing. Well, Where did you put them? I'll probably get them, no? <laughs> they're, uh, they're just sitting behind the camera, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh, we're going to change it. Let Jimmy get his
Lovely job, lads. Thanks very much. Fair play, G. Um, Facebook.com slash who owns ye? Who owns us? I was reading Max Hopper up it. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Brilliant stuff. Um, keep taking bottles off the shelf there. Fill your pockets uh, awesome. before Jamie. Yeah. Good stuff. For no reason. Got the long <laughs> That's it. Dead right. Dead right. Yeah, I won't tell Jamie anything. There's nobody watching this. Don't worry. You're grand. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll come back to you in a bit. No worries. Thank you. Fair play to you, lads. Thanks a million. Great tune. You're a tour. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Jamie, uh, who has relocated himself to, let me see, I think he's down by the washbacks. Let me bring Jamie on. There he is. Welcome back. And just like magic, you join us in our mash house. Uh, just this. a quick one. Those, those bottles, Barry, that you see along the bottom row were full earlier. So we're going to have a wee work with them when we go back in here. Just take but it out of their payment, guys. like. Yeah, yeah, take it out of it. Enjoy <laughs> them, like. What do you mean payment? They're here for free. <laughs> it's a favorite. But yes, just like magic, I have now relocated behind the camera. Uh, and now you join us in our mash house. So Amazing. Fairly impressive mash house, if we must say ourselves. You know, you can see in the far side here the Belfast red brick that we've, we have went for. Um, just a touch. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll sort of walk you through here. And hopefully the Wi-Fi kind of holds up. Some Perfect, of the, yeah. the Eagle Eye viewers might notice that we have two. We have a mass conversion vessel and a larger ton, you know, not unique, but not normally seen um, within that many Irish whiskey distilleries for it. And, it, you know, it, it opens it up. Um, Aaron was telling me it opens up to the amount of possibilities that what we can do when we are doing our brew as such and um, the capabilities that they can do. So... We, we will kind of call ourselves a green in the glass distillery that you can see it is very much a tourist um, distillery, but you can see all the workings of it. So th this is our mill, you know, from the side of like the back for our barley coming in and then goes into our, our first one, which is our mash conversion vessel um, for the barley to go into it. So, you, you know, when you are here, you'll see all the hot water and the barley coming into this bit for that. So, you know, it's... it's there is a lot of unique equipment here at the same time. I think Aaron had a field day when Terry gave him the checkbook and said, go out and get what you want. And, you know, he didn't really hold back at the end of the day. It's stunning. And where is this in the distillery, Jamie, in terms of the, the layout? So the big picture you showed us of the, yeah. of the layout. So what would happen is um, when you first come to our distillery, you'll come to that lovely stone clad building at the front. Um, and that's where your tour will start. You'll go into the right hand side of it um, for the ingredients room. Uh, and that's where our tour guide will then start to tell you everything that's uh, happening, you know, from your barley and all the parts of uh, whiskey that are to make whiskey is needed. It's very much a hands-on visual tour. There's a lot of stuff that the tours can uh, take part in, shall we say. And then you come up to the first floor. So when you come up the first floor, you'll see these uh, glass doors to start off with. And if you look there, that's my studio where I'm coming from to tonight. But you, you're met with this lovely sight of high ceilings, red brick walls and you know you, you see all the pipes that are part of this distillery you know you go to like at the minute th this won't be here um when, when the tours are on this is for the guys that are still doing a lot of the commissioning and getting things tweaked right but it, you know it, it's you can get up close shall we say you know i've been to a lot of the distilleries where you're behind glass screens or you're nowhere near it and it, you know it, it's just a different element of it so you can see our washbacks we've got six of those we can talk you through it in a minute you know, you can walk right up to it. Um, you can see that the copper, you, you know, it, it is very much touchy, touchy, feely, feely is the best way of putting it. Um, <laughs> and I, you know, yeah. I'd if I was on the tour, I'd be straight over going. I wonder if I can open this and take a sample and see what happens. But you know, it's it, it's 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 just stunning for me um, personally. Help us understand um, for those of us yeah. who uh, are not academically inclined when it comes to distilling and fermenting. So the grain. Um, comes in uh, 
here through the through the brick wall. Uh, walk yep. us through, uh, even at a very top level, the process then uh, towards the creation of the whiskey. So I will do my best for it, and no doubt Aaron and the rest of the still, distilling team are listening and going, uh, "What's he on about?" So we will keep <laughs> it. We will keep it sort of simple at the same time and explain what I understand. Perfect. From. So we come into our mash conversion festival, and I believe that that goes around from between half an hour to 45 minutes for it. And that's where it starts to break down your body and starts to get all the enzymes and the sugars and that sort of thing out from it. They then pump it over to what most people would know, which is your larder ton um, for it. So I don't think there's anything in it at the minute. There probably won't be at this time of night, but look, we'll just take a, a quick quick look in and um, no doubts i'll be getting a message going shouldn't be doing that but you know <laughs> you can just you can just sort of see the rakes in there so you know that, that's where the body breaks down and it goes through from it and it's the bed off it afterwards and that's what goes out to the farmers once it's finished uh, you know the granules of the the body from it so the, the lovely big rakes in there it, when you open this up during the day the absolute smell of it is absolutely <clears throat> fantastic is the best way of putting it you know you, you just couldn't beat it with a big stick and then once, <laughs> once, it, once it's finished in there, they then pump it over to what is our washbacks. Some people might know them as fermentation tanks. Uh, distilleries will call them uh, washbacks. So we have six of those. Um, you can just see the top of them. They go right down to the ground floor. So they are 14,000 litres, but they fill them to 10 litres. So they do. So just to take one step back, we're a one ton distillery. So that means one ton of barley um, per mash. And we have six of our fermentation tanks. So that's where it'll go in and um, for here. I think I don't think you will be able to see it just yet because of the reflection. No, that one's empty. It was full earlier, I believe. Check another one. But th this is where it'll start. You know, they put the yeast in it. No, nope. and that one's empty as well. Someone's Somebody stole it. Someone's the lads, I'd say the band. I'd say the band yeah. took it. <laughs> I'd say it's the distillers going, you know what, we'll get him back for all the times he puts me up in front of the media. That sort of thing, <laughs> but yeah, that that's where it goes in, and it starts to germinate and fer uh, fermentation, that sort of thing, and it's it's you know it's it's ten thousand liters from them. So you know the, you can walk in here, you can see all that, and tour guides will completely take you through it and explain the process in full detail. That's my oversight of it. I don't have the technical ability to be a distiller. That's that's why I'm not one is the best way of putting it for it. But that's the mash house for it, and once it's finished, we then flip you around to. Oh, what are our that. stills and th this is a lot of the things that most people will recognize straight away so Beautiful. uh if it was daytime just out there is our lovely big courtyard that you would uh see in the see in the photo so we've got three very unique stills what i believe anyway just the shape of them the size of them uh, and the amount of copper contact that we actually have um, and and we'll, we'll kind of talk you through it so we'll this is our wash still, and it's 10,000 litres. And we take the name of it, it's called Donard, um, after the highest peak in Northern Ireland. So our three stills are actually named after mountains in County Down. So we have Donard, uh, we have then Sleeve Crube, and in the far end, we have Wee Binion. So it's just a nod to us being in County Down and what we've got, but there's no way of actually zooming in, but our, our stills are fairly squattish, shall we say. You know, there's the big shoulders here for copper contact. And then we have the bulbs as well. So the more contact you have, the more reflux, you know, the, just more the bit the, the becomes refined. Bolder character is what we're looking for. And then our line arms are also in an upward incline. So they are. So lovely, lovely, shiny new copper stills. Stunning. Right. And, yeah. and these are, so, are you're, these are working right now during the pandemic. You're distilling. They're operating. Yeah. So we first distilled on the 9th of November, uh, 2020, and since then it's being uh, pedaled to the max and all go. Um, we filled 161 casts just before Christmas there, which is part of our cask release program called Ankea Dune. So the 161 part of it is, the reason why there's 161 casts is the estate called Kalini Estate that Terry's distillery and property on is 161 years of age. And then we called mm -hmm. it Ankea Dune just for a nod to County Down, and it's a play in Irish words, and what it means is the first down, so like the first whiskey put down, but the first whiskey put down in County Down for us. You know, you can play around with it uh, quite a way. I can see my other half's checking in on me, uh, up to no good. I, I told her I wasn't drinking, so. We'll give her a wave. Hi, that, that, that's, that's, me, that's me in trouble at the end of the day. <laughs> but, yeah, so we've moved on to is our intermediate still, and it drops down to five and a half thousand liters, so it is. Uh, and it's called um, Crib, Steve Crib. So just a, like another nod from it. But 
you know, if and these if, are looking out know, in the courtyard, the far, the, so I can see through the glass there. That's the courtyard. Yeah, between so the buildings. you can you can just kind of see it. Uh, this bit over here is our wedding venue over the far side of it. Reception would be somewhere here, but the reflection of the glass. And then this is what we're opening um, whenever we're allowed. It's called Hinch Brasserie. So we have a full restaurant on site that, you know, you may come here for a tour and finish with food. But what we want to give back to the local community as well is somewhere like a central hub. We are in the middle of the countryside. We've caught a couple of towns around us. But we want this to be a focal point. You can come here for your teas and coffees during the day, your lunches, your brunches, your breakfast, your dinners and your drinks. And that just means at the end of my working day on a Friday, you're going to find me in there drinking a couple of Hinch whiskeys at the end of the day. What a venue for a for a wedding. Um, yeah. It might, it, might, it might be time to, to renew renew my old vows, you know. Uh, I don't know if you'd be up for uh, for going to Ireland to a distillery, but I'd be delighted with it. Like, Listen, it, there is a big uptick in it. I think we have already got just over 10 weddings already booked in for later in the year. So, you know, th there's a big uptake for it. There's people there, and I'm sure... Uh, the likes of Omar might ruin you as well, as well, and Ivor and Dave in <laughs> Dublin. You know, there's there's a lot of people. I I was trying to think off it earlier, um, and when we first started in this venue, what distilleries you have the possibility to get married in that the backdrop is three stills, um, for it. And I'm I I honestly can't think of it. I know a couple in Scotland, but they're fairly minuscule. Um, over here, I I don't personally know one. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, the story that you can do it in. Um, you for can get it. all so, your loves in one place. You get a photograph with your loved one, your significant other, and the other things you love, pot stills, yeah. all in one photograph. I mean, there's a you, you save on photography. Like You won't have to go take pictures of distillery separately. Yeah, so Everyone's like, could you, could you picture coming up under a mezzanine here and being able to get your wedding photographs as a backdrop uh, with the stills <laughs> in place or out in our lovely courtyard? So... Yeah, I, I, I honestly can't wait to open these doors and take people around. I've been very lucky that I have brought a number of my friends around, my family around, and I brought some of the bloggers. Uh, you know, Paul from Belfast Whiskey Club has been up. Paul, I think Paul was here when it was a construction site. You know, you know, I, it's, it's a, you know, if you look at my social media during the day, it's just endless photographs of this place, and people are probably get fairly annoyed at the end of the day. But so that that's that's our sort of three stills for that. And as much as we are a whiskey distillery, and this is a, a whiskey show, shall we say, we'll we'll flip around here and show you oh, what we've got lovely. here, and and that, that that's our gin, gin still for anybody that's it, it won't no vodka, but it'll be gin. No vodka, just gin. Just gin. So Terry is very much his wines are the Chateau de la Ligne out in France in Bordeaux whiskey and then he's got his gin and just to touch on it our gin was the most highly awarded gin 2020 um out of the seven international um competitions that went on we won six of the major awards so that's a testament to iron and his team to where they got us to and the recipe for it so it's all all go um you know it's i guess it's a bit mishmashy walking around with a phone in your hand and oh, it, that's but, amazing. You know, what i was touching on was you know you, you see the aesthetics of the place it's stunning with the red brick we do see the mill you know there's some distilleries that might not show you that and then you know we're very lucky that i shall touch on that we've got our lovely bottle in line downstairs so we can do it you know today some of you might have seen on social media that um craft and cast was launched and we bottled the first i think it was two pallets worth we we bottled today off craft and cask imperial stout so you know, give, that, give us a look at that bottling line again. Go back and show us, um, so we can get yeah. a look at this. So it's not often we see. Not every distillery has their own bottling line on site. Yeah. This is pretty unique. Yeah, I'll probably get shouted out for showing this as well. Um, I'm sure the guys tidied up as best they could, but yeah, that that's it there. So, you know, the green comes in from that point, it goes through the distillery, and it ends up going out the door after you bottle it um, for it. So, it's all hands on deck. You know, I I think there's five distilleries in Ireland that um, might bottle in-house at the same time. It's amazing. Not certain. Yeah. Um, listen, I probably will get shot of this, definitely, but we'll give you the guys or yeah, music guys in here. <laughs> yeah. So this is our Fill band. in their pockets. Uh, look. Look, fill in their boots. Yeah, they see them. Look, there they go. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll quickly show you this. This is our maturation room, and we won't spend too long in here because I know my boss is watching, but this is the quality of the distillery you're going to get. You know, this is all handmade. It's high-end oak, um, and over this side, we might say, it's very much look, smell, 
all out there. This wall will explain new make from double distilled to triple distilled and malted barley, painted malted barley. That sort of thing. You'll sit around this table and you get your hands on. On this side, this is where the name the Spectrum Room comes from. It's a spectrum of color. And this will very much explain, you're probably hearing an echo here at the second. No, it's perfect. This will explain what happens when you put it in different tasks. So we'll, we'll walk forward to this. And this is what first, we, what our, our example would kind of be first fill bourbon. It goes in as new make. And over a number of years, that's the progression it makes up until, we'll say, 15, 20 years at this point. And that's first fill bourbon. It then goes over to, if you were to move it into like a sherry cask, a poor cask, that's the effect it would then have it at that point. So that's part of our distillery that it's very much a case of we, we want to show you everything. The boys are scurrying around. They don't want me to check their pockets. I think it is. <laughs> They're dumping, dumping their goods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want to know what in that, that big case there is. I'm sure there's a couple of bottles in it anyway. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's absolutely stunning our distillery here at the end of the day. Um, I'd imagine um, there'd be a, a huge corporate business, Jamie, coming out of Belfast, you know, for off-sites, corporate retreats, coming to the distillery. It's a perfect location for it. Yeah, um, nine miles, you know, there's plenty of car parking here for everybody. Um, it's it just end, it's endless possibilities what this distillery can do. Um, and I'm sure people will be able to give me ideas. We have loads of ideas. And unfortunately, last year and this year, um, COVID struck that we couldn't open up. And that courtyard, potentially we have the boys back doing music live there in the summer, a couple of drinks, a bit of yeah. music, maybe I'm some real. comedians. You know, I have a million ideas in my head and I'm not going to say them now because I'll probably not get to go ahead with them. You know, they'll probably be told to tune them down at the end of the day. Because, the stories and know, sips live, in person, all taking yeah, place in the courtyard. So, listen, that, that, that is going to happen because, like, just to quickly touch on it, Belfast Whiskey Week is coming about in a couple of months' time and without a doubt, Paul is going to be using this place as a centre of broadcasting unit, be it on a good day outside and be it on a rainy day like it is normally in County Down, he'll be on the inside with this as a backdrop, or he could be in that spectrum room, or he could be in the tasting bar. You know, we, we want people Careful. to use this place. Uh, you know, lovely to show them on photographs, but we want this place to be used and maximised. If you're just joining us, we are coming live from Hinch Distillery, uh, just a few short miles outside of Belfast. Jamie Cotter, brand manager, has been kind enough to stay up well past everybody's bedtime to give us a tour of the distillery, and it is absolutely stunning. It is, uh, it's one of those sites you look at and you just you can't stop beaming because the, even, even though the pictures look stunning, the video looks stunning, you know what it's like if you just stand there and, and just soak it in and smell it. On a, on a day of operation, I'd say it's only unreal. So you're very welcome to our tour. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the comments. If you want to know, try and stump Jamie, try and uh, catch him out, do your best. Oh, that'll uh, be easy done. Throw your comments in there, we'll ask him. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, just like you just pivot around on the floor there and you're gone from the still room yep. to the, the fermentation. All, yeah, geez, it's all very well contained it's, there, isn't it? it, it, it it's very much an open plan distillery is the best way of putting it. You know, once you come through these doors at the start of your tour, you're you're into your mash house, your still house, you're over into your spectrum room and then the tasting bar. I would take you to the tasting bar, but unfortunately uh, it's locked up at that side of the building, so it is. But tasting bar very much uh, follows the flow of what we hear. You know, the lovely leather chairs, the relaxed feel, the Irish tweed, um, lovely, lovely big painting on the wall of an Irish elk, which is part of our monogram. Um, for our logo, you know, it, it's very much a casual, relaxed feel. We want you to go into that tasting room and just feel at ease. You know, you don't want to, you know, a lot of people might go on tours and feel that, okay, they're learning about whiskey, but they're maybe scared to ask questions or, you yeah. know, voice their opinion. We want them in those lovely, relaxed chairs and they feel at ease where they enjoy themselves and just want to go away with a really good experience that it's not industrial, it's... You know, a, a good way of putting it would be homely, might be a good way of putting it, um, in the different types of rooms that you can go into. Jamie, a couple of questions coming in that uh, I, I'm sure you'd be the man yeah. to answer them. The first is, how many litres of liquid uh, can you distill per year? Okay, so currently we have the capacity to do 400,000 uh, litres per year. Now, there is the capability to up that down the line if needed, but currently it's 400,000. Okay, perfect. Um, and... Two questions uh, relating yep. to sources of your ingredients. Michael uh, in Glasgow wants to know where does the water source, where is the water source for the distillery? And um, Peter yep. wants to know where does the barley come from? 
Okay, so I touched on the first part. Um, the water comes from the unique Silent Valley in the Mourne Mountains. Um, this is an outstanding natural beauty spot. Um, if anybody Googled Silent Valley, you just couldn't ask for a nicer reservoir. So uh, the Mourne Mountains down to ourselves um, for our water source. Our barley comes from a number of places. Um, we're very lucky here in Northern Ireland that we are part of Ireland and we can source but also we can go across to the UK and lift it. Um, our head distiller has very made it very much clear. He wants the best ingredients that he can get. And if that means going to get it elsewhere, he will do it. Um, you know, he doesn't want to be tied down to it has to be Irish barley. He will use it where he can. But if there's a bad harvest, say, you know, you're, you're then um, not in a good position that you might not have enough to do it. So being in Northern Ireland, we have the best of both worlds is the best way of putting it. Yep, that's fair. You've a, a foot, a foot in the Republic and a foot in in the UK. Yep. Um, to to be able to source, take take whatever liberties you can, and you know, whatever opportunity is put in front of you, use it to the max. The um, what we didn't talk about uh, while looking at these wonderful stills is yep. the type of whiskey that is being distilled here. And um, let me see, uh, Tatsuya. Ishihara asks, um, when making single malt and single pot still, okay, we'll come back to that question, but you're making yep. single malt here, isn't that right? Yes, our distillery is going to be primarily uh, triple distilled single malt. We want okay. you to be able to pick up a glass of whiskey when it becomes our own spirit and that character, that bold flavour. You know, Aaron, our head distiller, just to touch on it, has worked in Scotland at some of the biggest distilleries and then has worked in Africa in some of the best breweries. And he comes back and we, where we are in County Down is the stones that are across the Scotland. And we want to be able to take um, those cultural learnings between Scotland and here and blend them together. You know, Irish whiskey, a lot of people believe is triple distilled. There is other distilleries that are double distilled. But we want to be able to take triple distilled and give it those bold, strong characters that people associate with scotch, but at the same time still being maybe reassuringly smooth like an Irish whiskey and triple distilled. But that's not to say that we won't do double distilled at the same time. But currently what we've been doing is triple distilled single malt. Beautiful. Um, so Tatsuya's question is to do with uh, yeast. Um, but that might be more of a question we might put to Aaron uh, in the future. Um, but he asks, That's definitely uh, one for them, yeah, boys. We'll put that to, to Aaron and we'll, we'll, we'll make a note of that. Um, let me see. Uh, lots of people talking about breaking into the distillery and trying to pick the locks because they want to be in there with you now. Um, uh, you're all banned from the live stream. That's the end of you. You're never coming back. <laughs> trying to break they also in. Have to get, they also have to get past a couple of guard dogs. So good luck to them. <laughs> um, right. Beautiful. Okay, so yeah. I think we, that's that's our questions. Uh, oh yes, uh, Mark yeah. asks, where are Mark Devlin asks, where is the whiskey then cast? Where is the barreling room? Yeah, so outside our uh, outside to the far right hand side of our distillery, that is where we cask our whiskey. It's all on site, and there's currently a maturation warehouse being built. Um, I think it's twenty thousand square foot for the maturation room. I'm not hundred percent certain, but that will be where we stole our our stole. Uh, store all our barrels on site in future very good so there's a couple of hundred barrels here as it is for our Kia doing um but in the future we will have all of our whiskey on site beautiful beautiful uh, lots of people looking for a, a professional photograph of the uh, spectrum rooms they can use as their screensaver so there's a job for you now for tomorrow well i'm i do have two very good photos which i use personally myself but we don't want to put it out just yet until the distillery is fully open and people start coming in to see it themselves. Sometimes you can give away too much of a distillery and that's probably where I'll get shouted out by the big bosses tonight going, oh, you're on a live stream to the world showing them. them. <laughs> listen, you got to do it. But yes, listen, once this distillery opens up, there will be more photos that come out and want one. It just means I can leave the office with a camera in my hand and go and take the photos. Happy days. Yeah. Well, I think... Um, all of the questions, I think, for now have been answered, Jamie. Uh, this is amazing, uh, an amazing tour of the distillery, the stills, the fermentation, washbacks, yep. uh, stunning, stunning architecture, stunning design. Can't wait to get there in person. Um, but I have a thirst on me like no other. So I'm wondering, is uh -huh. it time to move on to uh, a, a bit of tasting? Yes. Put a few whiskeys perfect. inside of us. So what I'll do is I will turn this off and I'll put you on screen for a second or two and then I'll run back into... What I like Sounds to call my good. podcast studio. So I Great stuff. in about 10 seconds. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Jamie. We'll go to the lads who have filled their boots, their pockets, and uh, everything uh, that they have with them uh, with whiskeys uh, to 
help them with their playing and then keep them satiated for the next few months, judging by the empty shelves. Lads, you can't, we see you like, you're on camera all the time, like. <laughs> you're uh, a stone room sort of thing to yourself, so. <laughs> About once in your life. Uh, you're dead right, you're dead right. What do you play for us next? And the way the parking gas seems pretty apt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Go on, so. Good man. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, sung like you were about to run off into the distance with a, a song that closes out the night now that your pockets are full. But I believe um, you're sticking. <laughs> Absolutely. Coats a wee bit heavier since it came in. That's <laughs> <laughs> Butch cats well, in. Not bad, <laughs> well, we will part from you now and go back to Jamie so for a little bit of whiskey tasting. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in a bit, lads. Thanks a million. Yes, enjoy. Bye. 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 There he is, magically transported 30 feet to a different part of the distillery. Back in front of the green screen. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> You've been at home the whole night. I think people have waited long enough. We're an hour in. I think I need a drink as well. It's the longest we've ever gone without a whiskey inside us on the lock-in. But uh, we, were just, we were distracted by the chrome and the copper and the stainless steel. Like Sometimes you've just got to admire the beauty of other things before actually drinking the whiskey. Very philosophical. Very philosophical. Oh, I, I had that one wrote out earlier, don't worry. Jesus, huh? you've been practicing that one. We have three whiskeys that we're tasting tonight, and Jamie, you, you told me before we came on, the order of them is going to be, we're going to start with the Hinch five-year-old, double yep. wood. Perfect. Then, then we are going to move on to the 10-year-old sherry cask finish, which we have here. We will talk more about availability across the U.S. for these as well. And then we're going to move on to finish with the peated single malt. Jamie knows that I'm a sucker for a good peated whiskey. Um, yeah. So he's excited about that one. I'm wondering if I'm going to be the person to convert you. Listen, I'm getting closer and closer. Look, black pits here and everything. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm expanding all the time. 
I'll say no to. I'll not say no to anything. I'll I'll try it at least twice. Fair play. All right. So, um, obviously, you're a new distillery, and uh, in order to uh, pay for those wonderful bricks and mm -hmm. uh, copper pots and uh, and everything else and your wages, you have uh, released whiskies which uh, uh, bear your name. Can you tell us about the range? What you put into the market so far while you're waiting for your own whiskey to mature? So currently what we have in the market is a range of blends, a pot still and a painted single malt. What it was is you touched on it. So on the front of the minute, it currently says Hinch Irish Whiskey. When it becomes our own distillate, it will then change the Hinch distillery. And you know, we, we want to be transparent here. We, we we're very clear that this isn't our liquid. Terry Cross went out and spent about five million pounds worth on inventory of whiskey. You know, Aaron went out and specifically bought what he wanted. So, you know, we open up with our small batch and what we've got in front of us here is, is a journey we want to take you on and explain the elements of these whiskies that will play a fundamental role in this distillery going forward. What we, we're kind of doing is it, it, we'll take one step back before the five-year-old because it's a progression. What we first up have is small batch bourbon cask. Okay, so in our distillery, bourbon is going to play a significant part in this distillery. So what we have done is we have taken a blended whiskey and it's 75% grain and 25% malt into and blended it in. And we put it in uh, bourbon for four years. Okay. So that's the nod to how much bourbon is going to play a part in our distillery that shows you the effects of bourbon. And that's, the, that's our small batch. What the one we're going to try here is our five-year-old double wood. And that's to show you the effects of what woods can do. So our five-year-old double wood is four years in bourbon, okay? And then we put it into virgin American oak for one year. So if anybody's had the chance to try the small batch and the five-year-old beside each other, there is the unique elements of what comes through from that virgin American oak and what it can do in one year. And the five-year-old is my personal favorite from, from the range. So, you know, five years of age, we're not scared to put a statement on our bottles. And that says a lot about what this delivery is going to do going forward. We want to take you on a journey from start to wherever we go down the line. And we want you to try the whiskey. We might not put it out at three years of age. We might not put it out at four years. But we want to let you try it when it is a young spirit. There is a lot of young spirits out there which are really, really good. So that's kind of what this nod is. It's maturation process with the two types of woods and then what we can do at a young spirit. So I'm guessing I can see you nosing away straight away uh, and you're straight in for it. So I'm guessing- I'm, I'm both nosing and I'm pouring it all over my table and people are, are watching me uh, dumping dumping inventory all over my computer, uh, it, such as my enthusiasm to get it into the glass. But Eric, sure, listen, there's no damage done. You're ready, get, you're ready to get stuck into it anyway. There's a decent amount out of that bottle. <laughs> yeah. Good day, some poor. Yeah. Anyway, but first of all, Slancha Barry, good to be on with you. Um, Slancha. See you again, and hopefully we see you again in person fairly soon. Indeed. I guess, indeed. I seen on social media today that a number of people have went out and bought some of the whiskeys for tonight. So thank you for doing that and spreading the word um, of Hinch across America as the rollout begins. Indeed, we got lots of people drinking the the five year old uh, founder. I think I think it was found in Kentucky. It was found in California. It was found in a number of places. So yeah, great to see people turning up with the whiskey. Um, Jamie, talk us through what we're nosing here. I'd love to get your thoughts uh, and give us a little tasting of this. So again, like it, the best thing about whiskey in the world is everybody has those different opinions. And for me, what I get off that nose is what you would get off the small batch. You know, the, what you would normally get from bourbons, your vanillas, your toffees. But when you put it into the Virgin American Oak, I get a lot of like peppered spice. There's a lot of orchard fruits there as well. You know, for me, I don't know if any other people get it, but there's almost a hint of a mocha, like a coffee mocha coming through that you should get on the palate. You know, yeah, golden brown sugars. You know, this is my personal opinion, and it's fantastic when someone gives you something else that they're getting. Um, and for example, we are working on another product in the background and we were sitting in the office and somebody came out with a tasting note that none of us are getting. And as soon as that tasting note came out, we all sort of, you know, back into your glasses for a smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of look at each other going, yeah, it's there. And the more you, the more you think you get it. And that, that's the fun. 
whiskies are meant to enjoy. You're meant to explore them and you're meant to be able to share what you're getting. And everybody's palate is completely different. So for me, on that nose, it follows through from our small batch into our five-year-old and that virgin American oak for that final year plays a significant part, bringing through that peppery spice that is associated maybe with bourbons. Brown sugar, I get the brown sugar, I get the white pepper, I get a little bit of honey, a little bit of vanilla. And there's a liveliness. It's a, it's, it's a liveliness that comes from that. Well, it's, it, it's not been it's not been sleeping in a kind of a Rapunzel like uh, slumber for a hundred years. It's got a liveliness where it's it's dancing. It, it's, it's the young lively whiskey that you know. This whiskey for me um, has endless possibilities to sit neat. But the bit that we're finding from bartenders now that we're starting to talk to those guys and roll out and bars are starting to plan and reopen, we're finding that this whiskey is becoming a really good mixing whiskey. You know, old fashions, the Tipperaries, and you know. Yeah, I've had an espresso martinis, but with a whiskey base, you know, we, we have what well, here three different bars that I can go and play with if I want to go mix cocktails. Lovely. So, should we take a sip? You know, but yeah, Slancha. Really be good to see what people get on the. I'm not going to be able to take a serious note here. Uh, Michael Stewart is coming with Hickory, and all we'll say is Michael Stewart is a very good friend. Pins Distillery and is a very good public in, in Belfast and Northern Ireland and has done amazing for the scenes. But when I first started any social media posts I put out was Hickory. Do you get a Hickory note? So <laughs> no doubt, down the line, there is going to be a whiskey and I'm going to make sure it is infused with bacon that he has to buy every bottle off just so he can have his Hickory note. <laughs> well, I will say a belated happy birthday to Michael Stewart. It was his birthday yesterday. Age, not happy so birthday, sure. Michael. Happy birthday, Michael. Should we try and de de um, determine his age from his profile picture there? I'm going with um, 33. Oh, Jesus, he wouldn't be that much older than me then if he's 33 in that photo. Um, <laughs> but I definitely say he's not 33. And that's me barred from some of his pubs and restaurants probably now going forward. You're waiting all night for Lauren to give you her tasting notes, and uh, here you go. You, you haven't been let down. Freshly painted curbstones. I'm going to disagree with Lauren. I'm going to say it's more fresh, wet gravel, but, you know, um, Lauren has been waiting for that one for maybe about four years just to get it in, so I will give it to her. Um, Michael has told us to try 60, so happy birthday, Michael. Whether you're 33 or 60, I hope you're enjoying Slanger, a bottle of whiskey. Slanger, um, sir. I'm getting... Uh, kind of a biscuity, dry malt note, very strong biscuit malt uh, coming through. Yeah. So it, it is a blend, but there is a high malt content at the 25% malt. <clears throat> so we have played around with the five-year-old at different blends, and this is the one that significant at 25% malt on the grain um, it comes from. And, we, you know, people probably know where this comes from. The very good guys down at Great Northern Distillers make excellent whiskey. And it's Aaron and his team that have taken those components and put what I personally think is some of the best blends out there on the market between our small batch, our five-year-old, and the 10-year-old that we will then move on to. Um, there's a few myths around Irish whiskey that I know you'd be a big fan of kind of bursting myths. And um, one of the myths is that the darker the color, the better the whiskey or the older the whiskey. But you could age a whiskey in a, in a, in a bourbon cask for many, many years and it wouldn't get much much darker than this would it no it, it's it, you know it depends what level of char there is it depends what quality of barrel you put it into um you know, talking about what comes out of it we are currently working with a whiskey that number of people have tried online um i think you might actually try it last year during belfast whiskey week and when we first seen that whiskey i'm not going to say what it is because people are waiting on it coming but when i first seen the color of that i had never seen color like this in my life and i went basically that can't be possible and the guys here told me yeah what it is it just comes across fairly fairly well so yeah for five years of age it, it, it's there so it is um nice color to it and um, for it you know lovely there is sort of like a, a brown color off it um for it but for it's me that lovely, no. lovely mouthfeel it's um it's it's Oh, it's hard to describe. It's like a kind of to me, it's like a scone. It's like a, it's got that lovely kind of a, a creamy meeting, a kind of a biscuity, 
dry note of a scone in a good way. Like I love a scone, and um, yeah. for some I reason think I'm just thinking. Of, for me personally, that would be coming from the malt content and the the white pepper spice that you have touched on is, is your green element. But the green element coming in with that virgin American oak. And that just shows you what different types of cask can do, be it you put it with some companies out there have a double oaked and, you know, 14 euros of age that they have. Um, this is a four year old whiskey that then went into Virgin American Oak for its final year. Um, do you talk about where you get your, your casks from or do you buy them from merchants, kind of middlemen um, who supply you or their names that we would know that you talk about? Yeah. So we have an array of casks. Um, I think two weeks ago, possibly, Aaron brought in a number of casks that we're going to play around with um, for it. And I'm not sure where they came from, but when I went out and looked at some of the names, my eyes just lit up what's out there. You know, I think there was 12 variants of new casks that came in um, two weeks ago. And I know yesterday morning, unfortunately, I was in my bed at the time, but I some new casks come in as well, but the, the ones that will stand out to everybody, um, and the name is a big one, we went directly to Maker's Mark for our first um, couple of hundred barrels, and that was for our Nkia Dune, because um, there is a link between the Samuel family of Maker's Mark in County Down here, and their distillery in, in Kentucky. So, you know, we, we bear, if you were to look at our cask program in the brochure, it, it carries the Maker's Mark logo, and if you buy a cask, uh, please do send all inquiries to me. Um, you will see the maker's mark on the barrel at the same time. So, you know, we, we want to be as open and transparent as possible. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be some things that come along the line that we're not allowed to talk about. And that happens with a lot of distilleries. Um, that just unfortunately contracts mean you can't. But there's not many things I'm not allowed to talk about. You, you're, you've been kind enough to give us your time and your, your insights tonight. We'd be rude not to ask you about that cask program because obviously it's cask programs like that that fund the distillery. Can you, what, what can you share with us about your particular uh, program at Hinge? So our, like, when we first sat down to talk about the cask program and we bashed heads about it, we kind of wanted to make something that, a, a package, shall we say, that isn't out there. We wanted something unique. So it's very much a case of that's where the name came from. And Kia Dune, it's Irish for, I touched on it earlier, the first down um, for it. So it's a bit of play. The first down and county down, but also being the first whiskey put down for it. So 161 casts, it's, it's small. You know, there's other distilleries out there, 500, a couple of hundred. We went for 161 um, because the cleanest state that Hinch Distillery is on was 161 years of age when we sat down with it. Um, for that, and we went out and sourced the best bourbon barrels that we could. So every cask will go into those Maker's Mark bourbon. There is no seniority in our cask program. There's no cask one, and there's no cask one six one. It's you get your name on it, and you, there's just no seniority. Terry has been very clever in saying that he won't be taking cask one. He's got a couple of casks out there. But we we don't know what. Well, Aaron probably knows what cask one is, but it's just. A, a level playing field that you know there's been hype when single casts were released from other distilleries where this takes present and this takes present it is uniform this is your barrel it's in for a minimum of five years maturation it can be longer if needs be and then it goes into like we, we when you buy the barrel you have already seen what the labels look like we you know we sat down we designed the labels and it was into our lovely bespoke bottle that we have here so it's already thought through that in five years' time, it's ready to go. Um, and part of the big package that we put together was, you know, it, it's it's £5,000, a couple of quid short of £5,000. But what you get is you get your labels, you get your 200 litre cask, you get your bottles and you get your maturation. There's no after cost on our part um, for it. You know, five years down the line, you have to now go out and source your own labels, you have to out and source your own bottles. It's there in the T's and C's. What you get is a full package. And I believe it's one of the best packages on the market. So, you know, I, I think there's a handful, a very small handful of casks going. And we were very lucky that friends and family and industry people, you know, I think one of the first people to buy a cask was John Biddles that everybody knows in Belfast. You come to Belfast, you go to the flat iron bar called Biddles and him and his sons that run the place are the best characters in Irish whiskey up there with the Duke of York, but he was one of the first, you know, this guy buys in 
to Irish whiskey. He buys into the local community, everything, and what he does for it is second to none. There are some questions coming in about um, your website. When will the website have more details about the whiskies and the cask program? By any chance, is that the director asking this question? It's not. It's Magula Gula. <laughs> I currently, as much as I was launching Crafting Cast today, which we'll touch on and we'll give you the exclusive, um, we were putting the final details to our website today. Um, with the new distillery, we had to put a brand spanking new website in place and we used part of lockdown to create what is going to come so the tours you can book tours you can book your restaurant you can book your wedding you'll be able to find out details about all the whiskies you know it, it's it's a lot of work has went into it and we use this time wisely to make sure that when this place opens they have the best of the best websites and for those of you who saw the pictures we shared at the start we'll put a few more up in a second um i'm sure the quality of the website will mirror the quality of Jamie's photography, um, which has always been like you've been sharing incredible photographs for as long as I've known you on social media, where they're the kind of photographs where everyone takes their picture with their like their bottle in their kitchen against their tiles, you know, or they put the flash on. Jamie's like, no, no, no. Let me, yeah. let me cre creative direct this for an hour before I take the picture. Probably more than an hour. And that, that's kind of where I guess this helped me get my job and get recognized from other distilleries that I have done work previously. I've always had a digital SLR camera in my hand since I've been growing up and it's a passion of mine. Photography for me is an escape, but when you get to have it as an escape and you also get to do it for work, you know, it's, it's it, I am very, very lucky that the photos I get to take are the photos that this company are willing to let go out around the world. Um, and that's just what I tried to make a difference in 2016 when I first started taking this serious on a Rissy Jack was, Let's do what not a lot of people are doing. There was a small handful of people in America and an even smaller handful of people here. Studio lights, thousands of pounds worth of camera, just to make sure that my photos were that wee bit better. And I pushed myself. It's, you know, from doing it as a passion to now working, it's very much a case that I've got to take it up the next level um, for it. And I, as much as we want the character of our whiskey to stand out, I want people to be able to go, it's one of Jamie's photos. Why not? I, I have the opportunity to do it, so let's do it. No better man. And for people who are wondering if that's one of Jamie's photographs behind him, no, that's the distillery. Uh, it's not a green screen. Brendan Carty is wondering, distillery owner Brendan Carty has chimed in to say, that's a green screen, surely. No, you just missed the tour. We got the live tour around the distillery, Brendan. You're late. Whatever you were doing. Just like my... <laughs> that sound effects. sound effects on his green screen. <laughs> no, okay, <laughs> But yeah, the, the, that's one of the reasons why I decided that instead of sitting at home in my kitchen at midnight to talk to yourself, jump off the road and let people have this as a backdrop. You know, it's hard to replicate. Richard Agnew uh, says he's got to get his vaccine so he can get back to Ulster, Ulster and do a wee tour of this place. Got to get my chops around the juice. Um, yep, we all have to get our vaccines and get back because there's drinking to be done. That whiskey won't drink itself. There's a good marketing campaign there, uh, vaccines and whiskey. That's my head now going crazy. <laughs> yeah. There's something we can do there. Brendan thinks it's green screen because there are no cats. Have you got a distillery cat? No, but uh, Terry does own a variety of animals. When you come to our distillery, you look around the back. He's got uh, Highland cattle. He has um, Highland cattle, horses, chickens, You know, roosters. There's pheasants there as well. And then he has the he has two of his lovely young Labradors that get to roam the property, and then a couple of guard dogs that I avoid. As long as uh, one of them chases away the distillery mice, so it doesn't matter whether you've a cat or a horse, as long True. as one is on, is on guard. Um, <laughs> Lauren says, "Head first into the green screen." <laughs> uh, a couple more whiskeys, and that'll probably happen later. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't go through the glass. Um, <laughs> let me see what other comments do we have here. Um, yeah, this is opening up. Actually, this whiskey is. Um, like all whiskies, you know, you pour them for the first time and they start to change and evolve in the glass. Um, yeah, there's a lot, I, I, I maintain, there's a lovely mouthfeel to it. There's a lovely coating, um, lovely texture. Yeah, it, it just shows you that the significance of, how should we put it, uh, marketing that single malts are the best. You know, we are going to be a single malt distillery, but it just shows you what you can do with a blend at the end of the day. And we are super proud of what we've got out on the table. Bottled at 43%. Um, 
higher than is legally required. Um, and we shared in our Facebook group, Irish Whiskey Fans of America, and on Stories and Sips availability in the US. So we're kind of doing this live stream lock-in prior to global availability of the whiskies. Like you're you're rolling out, and April is more of a big is is a further push into the United States, isn't it? Yeah, so a number of states have previously got it, and I, I sent the list through to yourself. I think, what is it, uh, 13 or 14 states maybe? Yep. Have already got the rollout, and as time pushes on, that's currently happening with our distributors in America, Chopin. So they're doing an excellent job. And, you know, for me, being able to see people going in to supermarkets and posting it on the Facebook page, go and pick this up, you know, that just shows you that it's, it's starting to make it across America. and. We probably would have been ahead of time, except for COVID made some delays along the way um, for it. But it's, you know, the rollout's happening now, and it's not a bad time that we can be on the likes of your show talking about the distillery opening. And I, I seen a comment today. It was really good timing that Craft & Cast was announced while being on the lock-in. So that, that was thought of. And let's be honest, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, and we said that we would link up and um, talk about it because two of the whiskies are going to be an American exclusive. So... Let's talk to yourself, the biggest guy in Irish whiskey in America, and shout to your audience as well. We have a thirsty audience that um, they're they're mad for the story, as I am, like, and they're mad to connect. You know, just keen to understand. Look, Irish whiskey is going to have trouble standing out on shelves if we can't connect to it. I think you know, and I think the, it's lock-ins like this, and where we get a chance to go behind the scenes and meet the people. Because when we go to Ireland, we first want to meet the people, and then we'll have a drink with you. We're not going straight for the whiskey because you can buy the whiskey in America, like you know. So it's a uh, yeah, it's great to see distilleries like yourselves just giving us the chance to get a behind-the-scenes tour. Very important. Um, okay, should we move on to the second whiskey? Yeah, let me grab another glass, and then we will move on to our 10-year-old cherry glass finish. Okay, so here we have Hinch Irish Whiskey aged for 10 years. This is a sherry cask finish. I love these bottles, too. They're a lovely, heavy bottle. They're like a weapon. Yeah, there, there's a solid amount of weight in these bottles and, you know, talk about shelf presence. One thing that we went for on the bottle is, you know, there's a lot of this, there's a lot of whiskies that might carry the, you know, traditional greens that I think we have went for our own Pantone of dark, dark blue. And then there's a lot of foiling on the labels, but like what we went for, I don't know if it'll come across on camera. At the top of the bottle, you have embossed saying, you know, Hinch Whiskey Co. Just, just to be able to stand out. And then on the bottom, it's a testament to how long it takes whiskey to, your camera's probably better than mine, and the lighting, obviously. Um, at the bottom, if you look along it, it says the whiskey that understands time. And it's just a small motto to say, whiskey isn't made overnight. It takes time, it takes passion, it takes effort, you know, to lay that whiskey down and wait a minimum of three years, potentially 25, 30 years, and we're ready to do that. And that's just a nod to say, listen, the whiskey that understands time, we understand what we have to do. Serious cork too, says Chris. Pardon? It's a serious cork. Fine big cork. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fairly wide cork. I think it's 28 mil is the cork, which is uh, fairly big. But one thing it does do good if we bring it to the microphone is that noise. Chris said he, uh, he just picked a bottle up in Michigan. The owner of the shop said he never heard of it. And then Chris pointed out in the top shelf. <laughs> uh, if you want to point me to that person I'll send them a lovely email on Monday morning <laughs> send them a message um, Grumpy Cat says he's uh, happy to know there's a new whiskey to try Martin says uh, we need the Barry Made Me Do It distillery tour yeah that'll be happening that'll be happening um, Mark cool. McKenzie Hinch has been in his area for the last few months he bought the single malt and enjoyed it greatly just out of interest what mark or what area is Mark in yeah, let us know, Mark. Let us know where you are. Comments with that. Michael says it's nice to see an Irish whiskey ambassador use the Tua glass. Yeah, listen, we all, Barry, you know yourself, you've got the green Tua glass there, and Rosanna, who owns Tua glass. Um, I remember her sending me up a glass um, to me, going, what do you think of this? And then the first time I properly used it was at Whiskey Live Dublin 2018, uh, and there's a bit of a famous story there. It, the Tua glass is the glass that can bounce. Unfortunately, in front of a number of people in the foyer at Whiskey Live 2018, I dropped my glass. And you know, finally, when you go to these shows, you only get one glass, and my eyes yeah. just broke. Picked it up, looked at it, and went, oh, it's totally fine. Carried on the night. <laughs> but I didn't tell Rosanna that, and she came back to me in a 
on a Twitter message going, by any chance it was you that dropped the two glass and it bounced? I was like, yeah. So, you know, you've got the Glencairn glass associated with Scotch whiskey, but why not have an Irish whiskey glass? Irish whiskey, Irish whiskey glass, it makes total sense. Why would you not? Slange it. I got mine too. Oh, you must have been check. given the... Uh, you must have been given the rubber, the rubber glass for whiskey live if it bounced. Uh, I was probably rubbered by the end of the night, like um, after all the whiskies. But no, I think the, I still actually have the glass. To be fair, um, why would you not keep your first two glass? That's but, true. So we're on to our ten-year-old cherry finish. Then be interested to see what notes you get first of all yourself. So Oloroso cherry cask. Yep. So. I'll just jump in. It is a combination of, again, grain and malt. Um, and it is 10 years and it's finished for, excuse me, one year <clears throat> in all of us with sherry casks. So it is. Correct. Okay. So I know that we have to put the minimum requirement on the bottle of 10 years of age, but there is components of this whiskey that go 16 and 17 years of age. Oh, okay. So you uh, you mentioned the first whiskey was a twenty five percent malt, seventy five percent grain. Do you talk about the components or the the makeup in this one? So it follows it through the same again. So same. Does. Okay. Correct. But again, for me, I, I think personally, this here isn't the sherry bomb. It is just a yeah. nice subtle hint. You know, it gets those orchard fruits that you'd expect. It has that touch of Christmas cake. It has those sherry elements, but it's not yep. overpowering the base liquid off the whiskey. You know, it's X amount of years in bourbon. So you get those factors coming through. And what we wanted to do was just, just a touch of sherry. And the way that I would use it is an elegant finish is my personal opinion on it. That's the best word that I can describe to use it. You know, it's it, it's subtle layers of those uh, stewed fruits and it's you know yeah when yeah. you try it there is sort of that unmistakable nutty aftertaste you know i personally think it's sophisticated and complex the more you get into it because there is definite elements that open up it's one of those ones you touch on the five-year-old the longer you leave it the more complex it becomes i could try this a number of times and every time it's different levels of the stewed fruits, the nuttiness coming through. But for me, on the nose, you get what you expect with that sherry. You get it coming through, but not everything else that's overpowering it. You get, you get the elements coming through for it. Yeah, lovely dark fruits. If you know, if you hadn't said Oloroso, I'd have almost said that there's a tiny hint of like a PX note to it. There's that, uh, that deep, rich yeah. quality to it. Um, but it's not, it's like you said, it's not overpowering. It just sits there. But it makes room for some of that vanilla, some of that bourbon coming through. Yeah. I guess I better take a taste of it. I've been sniffing it here for past the nosing it for another minute. Yeah, Mike, Michael's got it right for us. It'd be interesting um, to see if anybody has managed to pick the 10 year old up in America. I know a number of people picked up the pot still. And I seen a couple of five-year-olds coming through, but I didn't spot any ten-year-old. I know people have mentioned that, but I didn't spot anybody closing the photo of it. So I saw some right. ten-year-olds mentioned here. Um, let me see who's got it. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've got the ten-year-old. I think Chris might have it. You know, one, one thing that I kind of describe it as is there's, there's almost those like um, garden fresh notes, almost if you think of. Uh, Fresh grass maybe being cut. It's, it's the best way that I can personally describe it. It's like a garden fresh. Mm. Well, that's very different now. That's a very different, very unusual flavor profile immediately on the palate. It's um, there's a note there now that I need that I need to find. It's not hickory. What is it? <laughs> I think you've just been given a wrong envelope to say that word hickory. Keep saying hickory berry as many times as you can. Yeah. You mentioned um, you mentioned dry grass, is it? It's not dry. It's a garden fresh almost. You know, it's think of a yeah. spring day and yeah. the sun has just hit it. And you know, when you walk outside, you just get that, that the freshness is the best way that I I mm -hmm. may be wrong, but for me personally, that's the only way I can I can convey it in my words. That it's it reminds me when I walk out that door on a spring summer day that there is that just that fresh grass, that lovely sunshine day, but you kind of take it back with the sherry and you think sort of those Christmas elements. So it's a nice 
combination. That's where the complexity for me personally comes into into play. It does change, doesn't it? it I, I get what you're saying with that with that garden freshness. It's almost a little. There's an earthy. There's an earthy tone in the front of the palette, and then I'm thinking of like wheatgrass for some reason, and I don't know why that's coming to my mind. But there's a kind of a earthy grass that is giving way then to prunes, raisins, stewed fruits. Yeah. It's not the amazing thing about the whiskey that what your palate tells you is completely different to what my palate tells you. And we could sit yeah. here yeah. for hours on end and you may cross over in some notes, but you may never meet in the middle. And that's not an argument, but it's just a good conversation to be able yeah, to go yeah. like this um, for it. And personally for me, I don't know if anybody has a topper for their glass. If they do want to put a bit in it and set it aside for an hour or two, when you come back to it, it will completely go on its head a different way. And there's just more better things that come through for me personally. Mm. I'm not sure what the green to a glass will add to it, but it might be those garden fresh notes for the green. Yeah, it'll taste greener when you put it in the green grass, that's for sure. Well, to um, be fair, the, the good thing that I would say about the, the green glass that you have is you use your eyes for your colour yeah. and your eyes tell you a lot. And one thing that we do in our sensory panels is it's glasses that are coloured that you can't see the colour straight away. So there's no preconceived uh, ideas of what it might be. So you are going in blind. And I think that's the best way. I, I love a blind tasting. I love sitting down with people and going. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. Don't be scared. Like we done a blind tasting earlier for a bit of fun. And with what they were playing with, and I got it completely wrong. But it's not the fun part about it. It is. It is. And and at the end of the day, if we both say we just taste whiskey, we're also right. Well, it's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying we're going to taste whiskey, but it's what you never <laughs> that makes it. This is one that, to me now, is is quite layered and quite. There's some elusive flavors in there that I need some time to sit down and, and, and make some notes and think about them and come back to them and look at it and maybe blow it a kiss, you know, and, and then come back again, you know. I bet like uh, Richard Patterson, no, in yeah. smell, take it away. It was not, I, I, yeah. I, personally, I personally won't be throwing it away because uh, I'll probably wreck the glass on the floor, but I wouldn't waste my <laughs> guess, I guess that's his uh, signature. Um, we'll come up with a room it one is, on yeah. time. But... Throw, throw something through the green screen. Richard yeah. wants to know what's the correct way to hold a tour glass. Well, I use the the base, the stem of it myself. I hold yeah, the base. Yeah, personally, of it. I, I, that is the way Rosanna has designed it. That you're not touching the bottom of the glass. It's personally for me, it's your thumb over the crock, which is Skellig Michael. You know, you might be able to touch on it better than me, but the bottom of it is a design of Skellig Michael off the coast of Dingle. Isn't it Dingle? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the Dingle Peninsula, yeah. Basically, you would take your your pointing finger and put it under, and then you would have your crock over. So it's it's a really firm hold. So it is. Um, I think it's a brilliant design of glass. There's you know many unique elements to it to do it, and I think probably the best part about it is the measuring that you get to put in it. Or you but also, put it like, also like what you've got for yourself. I am guilty every time I've taken a photo, put it on its side, and getting that as a photo. I think it's everybody's designed. it. You know, I, mean, well, I, pre I, I prefer a glass with a stem. Like I like to hold something other than the. I don't want to warm the whiskey, but I don't know. Maybe, like if I had a, I have Glen Cairns here. Like my hands are. I don't know. It feels awkward to hold them sometimes. Have you got no sound effects for booing in the background there, Barry? Boo! I've got yeah. all kinds of glasses. I mean, depending on how long this goes, we could be moving on to little sherry glasses. Yet you never know. Yeah, listen. There's a glass for everything. Don't get me wrong. Um, personally, for my everyday use, I use these. And then in our tasting sessions, we will use a tulip glass just because we need a lot of them. And um, it's, it's, I think it's the industry standard to use a tulip glass almost. Um, I'm going to give a shameless plug here because Mark Devon wants to know. He says, I'm sold. Where can I get a tour glass? Well, you can get a Stories and Sips tour glass on storiesandsips.com. Just go to our shop um, or just Google tour glass. You'll find them in many different places. But uh, yeah, we sell them with the Stories and Sips logo and they come in a, in a nice fancy box. I'm guessing you package those with your shelf. Jeez, I oh, do. Actually, we know you do because we sing. We sing you with your U-Haul van, was it? Um, going and collecting it because they didn't want to deliver it to you. And then I, I believe your apartment was absolutely swamped with boxes ready to go out. So, Mrs. and Stories and Sips has probably deserved a big night out once she's allowed out again. As a thank you, she is a very understanding wife. Um, you know, we 
we moved out to San Diego from Ohio um, a year and a half ago now, and we moved. We wanted to live in the center of a city. We wanted to live in a small apartment. We didn't want many things. Uh, there was no plans at the time to start a logistics and shipping business where you're shipping glassware around America. Uh, so some days there'll be 80 or 90 boxes surrounding uh, all furniture. Um, so she's very understanding. But, uh, and that's just, your deliveries. Find... that's just your personal deliveries of whiskey. That's what's coming in. Like that's not that's not what even is going out. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Will not tell her the real prices of the bottles and guessing. Um, Magula Gula wants to know: Will two glasses be available on the new Hinch website? Yes, it will. Um, we have two glasses at the minute. We have a tumbler if you want to use it in cocktails, and we also have our two glass, which will be available um, on our website when we go live. I think we'll go live in like two weeks max. Ed said, I left Ohio shortly after meeting him. I did, Ed. My work in Ohio was done then. I couldn't go any higher after that. We'd reached the top. We'd reached the top. Um, Steve says that he always thought the base of the tour looked like the Millennium Falcon. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it depends what way you hold it. Um, yeah. I'm not sure I'm not sure how I would get the rights to be able to name it that or anything, but yeah, I guess there's, there's sort of a resemblance there. Um, the sherry notes are coming through now for me after a few minutes in the glass, like very strong. And there's a, there's a lovely length to this much longer, even than the five-year-old. This lives on yeah. for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. There, there, is a good, there is a good finish to it. Um, there's, as much as it is a good, neat whiskey, there's something I recently used in it. If you know what, it's a Tipperary and it makes a really good cocktail of Tipperary. So I would recommend trying that if he's good. It'll be, a, it'll be a featured cocktail on our website. Okay. Stacy and Scott, um, let us know what notes you're getting from the five-year or the 10-year-old as well. You've got both of those there. Well done uh, for well, your productive trip. Yeah. It's not, it's not the, one of the best things about Irish whiskey swapping samples, isn't it? It really is. You, you, where else would you actually get it that the community are willing to open bottles, to count them into small samples and post them to one of your mates? Maybe not even your mate. I've had people on Twitter that I've maybe had one or two engagements with and next minute coming through. Like for, for me, I have spoke to Chris Hennessy a number of times online and at Christmas there, he sent me a fantastic red breast from 1972, I think it was. Um, didn't have to ask him for it, just went, what's your address? And next minute you're, you're sitting going, well, that's my drinking session for tonight. And it is, I, I just think you can't beat the whiskey community. And to be able to see, that there's people willing to swap hinge samples just yeah puts a big smile on my face and just makes me very humbled stacy and scott run the uh our ohio whiskey fan whiskey fans of ohio facebook group uh our facebook uh, or not a facebook group an in-person group that has its own facebook page uh which is doing uh, great things in ohio and that's our test market for the rest of the world before we have uh, more of these groups kind of splinter groups in-person meetups that, that kind of break off from our, our online group. And so Stacy and Scott and, and Ed and, and and all the Bryans up there in Ohio are doing great things, swapping whiskey. So it's great to see it. Great so they're, to see a good it. Bunch of lads. they're a good bunch of lads and lassies in Ohio then? All the best, the finest. Um, one of the fastest growing markets in the US for Irish whiskey sales, which is great to see. And uh, that's all single-handedly thanks to Stacy and Scott and their, and their, uh, their purchases. They see a nice bottle, they're out there buying it. Fair play to them and sharing it. If our marketing directors listening, um, take note, please. Yeah, seriously, you got to get into Ohio. Um, Ohio um, will buy up every new Irish whiskey that comes in and will celebrate it and talk about it and share it. So, yeah, you got to get to Ohio. No doubt we'll be on the list in time for it. Um, hopefully I get to Ohio once the, once the flights resume. You'll have to get over. Um, there is a some sherry finishes or sherry maturations can be overly sweet i don't get that from this do you no I, i've never got it from it and that was part of the the reasoning when we first came here that it was to show unique elements so like you've got your small batch showing the bourbon you've got your five-year-old showing what the two woods can do and this is into your older age statements as in what i said we will show you our liquid when it's young and we'll show you that 10 we'll show you the 12 and maybe at 10 years of age, we do put it in a sherry cask, but what we wanted to do was have that fine balance. We didn't want one element overpowering another. Um, and if you want a sherry bomb, there's plenty of whiskies out there offering a sherry bomb. And a lot of people don't like the heavy sherry. Yeah. This is maybe one of those things that kind of goes, it's a subtle note to it. And it's a very good way of 
exploring sherry whiskies that you can maybe open it up and maybe we have all Rosso. Maybe we put it in PX a number of years down the line. It's those different complexities that we're going to play around with. It does have a lovely balance. It, it's not often, yet to your point, that you see that subtle sherry note that hasn't been either consumed or lost in the background to the main maturation. Let's say it's vanilla, uh, vanilla tone notes coming through from the bourbon or some of that sweetness. Sometimes it gets lost and then sometimes the sherry is too much. But there's a nice little balance here, but it takes a few minutes to come out. It, it's not, it, it takes a few minutes to show itself. Yeah, it's like a lot, some people might show their character straight up. Others want to show their character after a couple of hours getting to know them. Listen, after a few drinks. Whiskies are like people. They have different characters for everything. Um, we've had some great lock-ins over the past few months uh, with distillers and brand representatives and uh, champions of Irish whiskey in Northern Ireland. And um, I maintain that it's the most it's the the most undiscovered part of irish whiskey certainly to me anyway like because i've i've never been to a distillery in northern ireland I've never been to bushmills never been to cologne i've never been to any distillery in northern ireland and i'm convinced that the crack is 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 almost as mighty up there as it might be down in cork oh, like your yeah. challenge i'd say you're, you'll, you'll hold it up to cork like the bar is being set there i think that's you've got it's not the first time you said cork tonight which i'm impressed with I will you say it many more times now that I've uh, let it out. An hour and 42. Well, I'm going to take the bias that not Cork is better because that's where I reside. So, you know, but yeah, Northern Ireland is on a on a whirlwind of distilleries um, coming through. And, you know, hearing you've got Bushmills who kept Northern Ireland afloat. You know, Bushmills is the staple and there's no denying what they have done for Irish whiskey and what they've done for Northern Ireland. And they will continue to do. But it's now time for the smaller distilleries in the province of Northern Ireland and Ulster, or wherever we talk about, to come hold their hands up and go, we may, we may not be on your scale, but we have something to shout about. And we have characters, we have everything. You know, from where I sit here, Brendan down at Clone is a stone's throw away. You've got the guys down at Eckenville, which is Dunville. You've got Copeland, you've got Radaman Estate for Short Cross, you know. You've got the guys in Belfast, which are opening up, you know, there's distilleries ready to go there. And albeit, you know, there is room for everybody. There definitely is room for everybody. And as much as I sit here and want to preach about Hinch Distillery, we still want to preach about the category of Irish whiskey, because if you go and buy another Irish whiskey, you will then come and buy ours. If you buy ours, you're going to continue buying ours, fingers crossed. But it's, it's a world of just the light that's now happening in Northern Ireland and the characters of Northern Ireland in the next, what, three years maybe, you're going to see coming through. And um, for, well, actually that's a lie because Radaman and uh, Eknable are ready to go with their spirit. You know, this is where the new characters of Irish whiskey are going to come through. Um, in the next couple of years, you had Dingle a number of years ago, which came across with their spirit. Tating then have come out with theirs. You know, it's, it's, it's an endless list in the next year or two. You're going to have all these new dislets, all these new characters and possibilities of Irish whiskey. Because, well, let's be honest, we're used to three or four dislets, maybe. And, you know, as much as we can play around, and that's what we're doing with it at the minute, different maturations, different blends, there's nothing better than what you're going to be able to do with your own character down the line. That's going to be our solid story. That's all well and good, but it's no cork like <laughs> I'll let you off with that one. You are the host of the show. You can, you can close me off straight away. No, I, I think that, you know, normally when I fly into Ireland, fly into Dublin, straight down to Cork, now I think I might be convinced that I might have to, instead of driving south, I might have to drive north and uh, well, head up both away. Well, Barry, the is, Barry, I think there's, is there one airport in Cork, is it? Or is there no airports in Cork? Did you go out of that? We have a great airport down up there in the hill in Cork. Have you never been to Cork Airport, no? No, I can't say I haven't. Um, <laughs> have I drove past it? Might have drove past it maybe once or twice. I doubt you drove. I, I'd say you didn't drive past it now somehow. It's up in a hill. Uh, you'd have to be going there like um, to get to it. Um, would it have been Kerry Airport that then I drove past on the way down to Dingle? Oh, um, you could. Yeah, you. Yeah, you could drive the, past the airport. Down, oh, right. down in Killarney, we might have went past it maybe. But uh, Northern Ireland has uh, three airports, so take your choice. Belfast has two, so you know. You've two you're punching hard, huh? punching big tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you've two, listen, you know, Dublin's the epicenter, and there's a lot of distilleries in Dublin. We've got to say, listen, 
you have one choice to fly into in Dublin. You have two choices here. I'm taking a month or two off once all this is over, and I'm just going to go hop around the country and have the crack in every corner of Ireland, every pub and distillery that'll open its doors. We have to go in and have a few sups and have a bit of crack. Remember to, remember to bring your uh, friends from Stories and Sips um, across with the same They'll be, they'll be squeezed into my suitcase. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I think, everybody, I think every distillery will open their arms to everyone. Um, yeah, tell, me, t tell me about um, the connections then between the founders' uh, vineyards and winery and the distillery. How are those two connected? Are they connected? Will they be connected? How do they help each other? So it already has been connected. Um, back just before Christmas from our inventory, we took an 18 year old single malt, excuse me. And what we've done is we took uh, Terry Cross's Chateau de la Ligne Grand Reserve casks um, from his chateau in Bordeaux. Um, and we married the 18 year old into the Chateau de la Ligne cask for um, six months for it. Um, and that's what our 18 year old bourbon came from. And that was a lovely, lovely project to work on. Um, I don't know if you have a picture there, you can maybe pull I up the world um, for it. Um, see if I can maybe find one if needs be. Yeah, I've got one, I've got that, one here. The world was very much a marriage of Terry's two great passions, his chateau, which he's owned for 21 years, and then his lovely new brand writing distillery, blend them together. So a unique element of this box was something that I haven't personally seen, and it was a logistical nightmare, but very much worth doing, was you might see it in a lot of whiskies where they put it in the wine cask or they put it in a beer cask that we've got here later to talk about. Why not put his Grand Reserve wine in with the 18 year old bourbon that you can drink both and see the both elements come together for it. Um, and, you know, to me, it was a really good presentation box because I'm going to take all the credit for it. So there you go. No one's there to argue with me at 10 to 2 in the morning. Will there be um, more perhaps usage of X wine casks then in maturation going forward you think yeah so like like anything uh wine casks will play a part in our distillery um and no doubt terry's wine casks will play a significant part in our distillery as well going forward and that's what i touched on aaron has brought in a, just a playground of 12 different casks um the other day i i think i know a couple of them you know there's vermouth there's px there's um just, there's an array of them there there's tequila as well and some of them i might still need to find out about but this just kind of shows you going forward that where we want to take it serious and this one was 650 bottles you know so fairly small run for it because it was only two casts that came across and a number of those bottles are going to make their way to america in the next couple of months as well time wise i'm not certain we're currently working on it at the minute we've just got the ttv approval um, and they will make it stateside at some point so no doubt um, I'll put it up on our social media and I'll pass it on to yourself that you can pass it on to them as well for it. Um, but I think a number of people have tried that and what it kind of brings from that wine element to it, from what I remember, it's been, been a while since I've tried it, but it's, you know, red summer berries, the plum, the apples, and in, in an abundance that you would get from um, a red wine. You know, it, it was the Merlot and the Cab Sauv that was married together for it. Mm. it's all good i'm gonna take a drink of water here um you had a big announcement today then of something you mentioned you've been working on for a year that was yep. your baby was it it wasn't my baby from the very start so when we first came in to hints distillery these whiskies were ready in cask on behalf of Derek Hardy and aaron had spoke about it and they sat for a while maturing and and then Basically, we were talking about it the other day. I found the original email that the names were bounced back and forth on a Wednesday night, and I had put a couple of names down, and me and Derek were sort of looking at each other, and you know that was the fun of it. We we were meant to go home at that time at seven pm on a Wednesday night, but we just got carried away. And then we brought our sales director in, and a couple of names went around, and we ended up on crafting casks. You know, we went through an array of them, and then we sat down and. What it was is me and Derek bashed heads and I went away and went on to Photoshop and Illustrator and put the split label in there for it. And so that, that's where you got it. And it's along the bottom, you know, you'll see the logos from Kinnaker, you'll see the logos from Whitewater. And that's that has to be credit to them. They 
play a big part in these whiskey. So why would you not shout about what elements have come into it? So Craft and Cast going forward will be a series of um, whiskies that have been used in X beer barrels. And these two are currently from Ulster Breweries. So Whitewater and Kinniger. So you have the three images in front and you've got the Imperial Stout, which is going to be released on the 15th of April, first of all, from our distillery store here. And then it will go to Independence for uh, UK and then Republic of Ireland and maybe another couple of markets. But the two on the Kinniger ones are going to go uh, stateside. So they're an exclusive and I have them in front of me here. So yeah. that are rye export stout. I can turn this the right way for it. And then we have the Irish Red Rye. So this is a collaboration with Kinniger Brewery. You've taken their their casks. You have um, finished the blends, the the, 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 the the blended whiskey for how long is it? Does it vary between the, whether it's stout yeah. or rye? Or? If you think, if you, if you take our small batch whiskey is what went into those barrels, so we took, for instance, um, the white water one, and we took our small batch, and then we put it in for, oof, I think it's 18 months, it went into their creme de la Kremlin. So their creme de la Kremlin um, whiskey that a lot of people would know um, won a lot, of, a lot of awards for it. So going forward, what we'll probably do is I would love to be able to present the whiskeys and the beer together. So these are the two that will make their way over to the United States and the Kinniger, yeah. Kinniger Brewing collaboration. Yeah, so I, I've got them in front of me here as well. Yeah, so it's got your rye export stout and then you have your Irish red rye. So those two are going stateside. They are fairly limited, Barry, but it's just sort of, yeah, let, let's go and show America what we can do as well because America is a big part of um, our markets. Will you keep us posted when you know where those yeah. land and end up and we'll share it in our group? Yeah, so what, what I did do is I sent an email off to our distributors just to sort of see if we could maybe get the heads up on where where they're going to land, that sort of thing, and that was sent today. So no doubt I'll be on the Facebook um, group letting people know, and it probably it's looking like mid-May at the minute, um, if all goes well. So, um, if, you, if you're just joining us, uh, we're here with Jamie Cotter, brand manager at Hinch Distillery. Uh, just a few miles outside of Belfast, we're talking about, uh, we're, we've just done a great virtual tour, which you can watch back uh, later on yourself. We've, we're in the middle of a, a live tasting, and now we're talking about some exclusives uh, coming over to the United States. If you are not already a member of our Facebook community, there's almost 8,000 people in there. It's growing uh, rapidly and a great community. It's called Irish Whiskey Fans of America uh, I'd love you to join us in there, a fantastic community, lots of great meetups that are happening in person. We do lots of virtual things like tonight and many other virtual events and exclusive uh, deals and things on whiskeys and glassware and all kinds of things like that. But uh, that's where we're asking brand ambassadors and distillery owners and representatives to come and share not just what's for sale, how much it costs, but the process, the approach, uh, and to answer questions from uh, from you, the whiskey drinker directly. So. Make sure to join us in Irish Whiskey Fans of America. You can search Facebook or you can just go to irishwhiskeyfans.com and it'll take you straight there as well. All right, that's my pitch. Um, Jaime is joining us from the Philippines. Hello, Jaime. Welcome to the show this evening. Uh, Richard says the um, Imperial Stout finish is something else. It's really good. Oh, yeah, Richard Cal, member of Belfast Whiskey Club, has had the pleasure of trying that, I believe. That's one thing that we have done over the past year, Barry, was um, doing some of the events. We wanted to take you on this journey. So a year ago, I teased the Whitewater, and people were like, can we release it, can we release it? And, you know, I'm like, I would love to release it now, but it's just not ready. Didn't make sense at the time, and now we're at a point where, yep, everything's perfect, let's go for it. This group might be making you poor, Chris, but you won't be thirsty. I can tell you that. You might have no money, but you're plenty of whiskey. True, true. <laughs> um, Stacy says great people in the group, like Stacy, who is a great person in our group. So these are coming. Craft and Cast going to arrive in the US in May. Is that the plan? Correct. They will. Uh, to, uh, potentially, fingers crossed. It's going to be mid-May onwards that you will see the two Craft and Casts um, touching down. They are fairly limited. There's probably about three thousand bottles of each. Oh, that's not very many. Okay, great. So we'll keep an eye out for those. Um, 
I know that um, our esteemed band members um, are uh, getting ready to wrap up for the evening. I think we have one more tune left in them, perhaps. Should we go for one more before we crack open the peated whiskey? Yeah, we'll pass over to those guys and let them go for it. Fair play. Lovely stuff. I see the guitars warming up there. The shelves are suitably empty. And uh, <laughs> great stuff. All right. <laughs> Come guess me this riddle I think I can sing It's hotter than mustard and lighter than cream What does wet your whistle that's clearer than Christmas Sweeter than honey stronger than sea Thanks, guys. That's for you, Jamie. Really appreciate it, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Where, where do you time. play normally, lads? When the world is open up, where do you play in Belfast? Uh, Bel mainly Belfast, yeah. yeah. Sort of city centre. Um, the likes of Cali Cellars and uh, some games in Cathedral Quarter and stuff like that. So, so yeah, very good. Forward to everything. So we're looking forward, forward to getting them. back and seeing people drinking <laughs> whiskey and all that. Back on the I know, so you, you have plenty of whiskey to give everybody now after your night locked in there. Like, you, right, you, right. Or well, a bit of back alley dealing with <laughs> <laughs> Lots of um, applause back and cheers from the audience. Thanking you guys for, for playing tonight. Thank you, lads. Uh, uh, great job, you. guys. Um, Lovely. Lovely. If people want to find out more about you, they can go to facebook.com slash who owns you. Yep, and we're on Instagram as well. And on Instagram as well. Give the lads a follow. Give them a cheer. Say hello to them. And if they have yeah, something to sell, would you buy it? Simple as that. <laughs> lads, thanks a million. We appreciate yeah, all the great tunes. Cheers, guys. Check their pockets fast. Uh, yeah, listen, that, they've done me well tonight, so I'll let them out with whatever they want to take. <laughs> Be like supermarket sweep. Fill up, fill yeah, up your really pockets. Is. It is 2 a.m., so I'm like tired. I'll not fight with them. So, listen, yeah, I'm, I'm so here. all we'll do is we'll keep an eye for them just running along this bit here. <laughs> um, and I can move two doors to get them. So, if anybody sees them running this way here, uh, just, just give me the heads up. If we see them dragging bags like big sacks of potatoes <laughs> full of something, <laughs> the guitar bags will be no guitars in it, it'll be full of bottles, and the guitars will be left in there. <laughs> I, I don't blame them if I had the opportunity. Who's to say I wouldn't do it? Sure, the dogs will get them on the way out anyway. True. So we're on to your favorite horses. horses. We are, we're, yeah. We're on to your favorite. We're on to the, the conversion uh, parts now. So we are. Heated single malt. Single malt. This yep. is our only single malt of the evening. Correct. And what a single malt to have. Sell it to me. <laughs> Listen, peated single malt is a biggie now in Irish whiskey. It is growing. You know, a lot of people think that peated malt wasn't a thing in Ireland. It was. What do you think you malted your barley with before the electric and the coal and all happened? And that's why Isla is what it is, because the trains went up to the coast of Scotland and went, there's no bridge across the Isla. How do we get across? So they used the peat. Finn and O'Connor, very good story in Irish whiskey, has said that yes. Years ago, they had it. So you had the likes of Connemara that had dominated Irish whiskey 
um, for pitted malt. It done absolutely fantastic in that to the options we had. Then you had a number of whiskies that came along that were finished in an Isla cask, that sort of thing. So when I first came to Hinch two years ago, there was no other peated single malts on the market bar Connemara. There were people distilling them at the time that hadn't been released. So I remember going, Christ, we, we, it's Connemara and it's us. And I remember taking it to Whiskey Live in London, Whiskey Live in Dublin going, here we go. And since then, happy days. There is other distilleries that have brought peated malt out. There is other ones that have sourced it ever. But this category is an ever growing category. And for me, this is what puts a smile on my face as well. Might not put a smile on your face just yet, but we're going to convert it. So we are. And well, it, um, it very ambitious it, of you. Yeah, it, it, but it says, but, you, but you're willing to learn because you went and got a bottle of Tating Black Pitch. I've seen you drinking other. Um, Dark Silky. And I can see that that bottle isn't full. So, I mean, you, you've already taken a bit out of it. But again, it, it isn't for everyone, but this here whiskey for me is just another way of showing what Irish whiskey can become. We aren't going to be the first that have distilled it, but we want to be part of that renaissance going forward, going, this is going to play a part in our distillery, and this is going to be a big category of Irish whiskey going forward, and we at Hinch are going to be part of that. It is health, of course. Let me ask you this. Like before, you, before you joined Hinch, would you have been a peated scotch drinker uh yeah most definitely um and it's where i learned a lot of you know i i first started drinking naked grouse round what can only be described as a metal bin uh with a campfire in it really up in a litrum <laughs> of all places in donegal um my dad was a bushmills man and black bush was his go-to but i didn't really take up whiskey until 18. um <laughs> uh, I remember. I remember. I remember being up in Leitrim, drinking Nika Grice with one of my best friends around the around a fire, basically, in a starry night with a river running down, and that bottle kind of sang to me. And I, I just liked the simplistic of the bottle. And I went home and bought a bottle and started drinking it, and then get into more things and came back to Irish whiskey, but. Peated, don't get me wrong, my first experience with Peated, maybe first, second experience wasn't a good one. It was a bar in Belfast called The Hudson. And my friends were all like, oh, you like whiskey? We've got this one for you. And it was Octomore. And it was 220 oh. ppm, I believe it was. You know, that that their black bottle on a shelf. Uh, my friend David Lavery went out and bought me a measure off and goes, get that dangy. And went, sure enough, bang. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. The nose was really, really, really strong. And I enjoyed it. So that's where when I then joined Belfast Whiskey Club and Paul was teaching me about all the different things. You know, it's not just Irish whiskey. We've, we've tried stuff from Australia. We've tried stuff from the middle of Europe, some of the most obscure places, but that's how you learn. But Peter Whiskey for me would probably be the one where I go home and I drink our Peter, or I go out and try other expressions to see what I can maybe have a chat with Aaron because Aaron, our head distiller, is a big pitted fan. You know, he loves his Islas, he loves a cool Isla, that sort of thing going forward. So for me, yeah, pitted would be your, your, yeah, you know, it might put hairs in your chest, but also puts a smile on my face. And if you have hairs, it'll curl them. Most yeah. people who tell me stories about getting into pitted whiskey tell me stories of being dragged kicking and screaming backwards into tastes of octomores and and sitting beside a fire in litrum of all places to drink whiskey like these are not these are not romantic stories these are no. i went through a bush tucker trial to to eventually down yeah. a whiskey like with so many non-peated whiskies out there why would we ever try you know <laughs> but then but that's like anything there's there's so many people that have tried malts that haven't tried blends that haven't tried what you know different versions and that's what we're here to do me being on talking about Hinge, but you talking about whiskey in general, we're here to broaden people's horizons and go, it, 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 the, the best example right now is, you are openly saying that you haven't been the biggest fan of peated whiskey. Um, yeah. I think there was, there's other whiskeys I've heard you mention previously that just isn't for your palate, but you have a glass in front of you, you have a whiskey in it, you're smelling it, and you're willing to try it. And maybe down the line, it, it'll take that one whiskey, this could be it, fingers crossed it might be, that goes, actually, this is what works with my palate. And that's that's the whole fun of it. 
So, so Jamie, help people understand. So there, there's a term in the world of Peter Whiskey, it's called PPM. Would you help us understand what PPM is and where this lies? Yeah, it's the, the pheromone levels in the body that goes across to it. So the PPM is really just a scientific scale of how much of that goes into your whiskey. So for us, um, pre-malting was 55 PPM in the glass. I haven't actually measured it, but from speaking to the guys in the know, um, I, I think it's around the 25 mark. So not super high. I mean, it's not your Octomores. It's, it's, no, it, it, it's very much, it's heavily peated before the malting for yeah. it. And then in the glass, obviously, you lose a lot of that um, PPM going through. You know, it is on the nose, significantly peated. It's, it's up there with some of the islas. Definitely not an Octomore, definitely not some of the higher the frogs and some of the higher our bags, but there is our bags and um, that sort of thing that are in and around the same category territory. So, and for, for our American, not just our American audience, for anybody, yeah. including if, if you'd asked me four, four or five years ago, how, how is whiskey peated? I, I'd have given you a ridiculous answer that wouldn't have been true at all because I wouldn't have known. Yeah. But peated whiskey is um, where the malt is dried uh, over a, a smoked fuel, typically peat or turf, yeah. as we call it in Ireland. Um, whereas many whiskies that you'll drink that aren't don't have that medicinal iodine smoky taste. Are the malt, the barley is dried in a kiln or on a malting floor over a dry heat, anthracite, natural gas, coal, uh, no smokeless fuels. Whereas peated whiskies are the phenols from those smoke that smoke attach themselves to the barley that survives fermentation and distillation. And while the flavor is reduced a little bit or the, the concentration of it, that smoke still lives on in the uh, in the final whiskey. Would that be a fair assessment of what? Yeah, in layman's terms, in simple terms, that's the, that's the best way of putting it. I'm, I'm sure if we had Aaron sitting somewhere here and Emma or other still and Damien, they'd, they'd no doubt. Um, I can see the boys running behind me here. Okay, we get, the, get the security guards in. Are they running um, away, are they? No doubt they will be able to explain it a lot better. But for people yep. that might not understand it, what you've just explained is the best way of putting it across where it comes from. And that's just a case of what I touched on earlier, that before the modern era came, for taking your coal to the other parts of the country before the motorways came, before the railways, you had to go down to the bog. You had to go down and cut the turf, and that's what you used below your kiln floor to get it. And that's why, to this day, it stands the test of time that people in Ireland still use it. And, and now there, Ireland, there weren't, there weren't up to a few years ago, or even maybe a year or two ago, there weren't maltsters in Ireland malting what? barley. Were there that malt, malt, malting peated? Um, no barley. No, there was. I, I think there's now two in Ireland that now do it. Um, again, listen, I'm here to learn at the same time. I, I know yeah. personally yeah. too. So if anybody wants to tell me any otherwise, please do jump in the comments and let us know. But it, it, it's just going to be one of those things. The more people now do it, the more um, money that will go into the infrastructure off of getting it going. Yep. So, so a lot of peated uh, barley comes to Ireland from England and from Scotland currently, but that can change. Uh, that can change in time. So, um, here's what I've noticed. I'll share my very short synopsis of my journey through peat. My, my first nosing of my of, of a Connemara a few years ago. No, no, thank you. Didn't want it. Not interested. My wife absolutely loves it. She loves a peated Scotch. She loves peated Irish. I couldn't get used to it. And as people started being very, well, people were very kind and patient with me, the likes of Dahi O'Connell from WD O'Connell um, and, uh, yeah, Sleeve League Distillers, um, right. James Doherty uh, introducing me to Dark Silky have helped me pick apart what I should be nosing. Uh, David Mara, uh, who's been on the show here, uh, grabbed me at one of the Whiskey Lives and yanked me towards uh, a Brook Laddie stand and said, you have to try Octomore. And I sipped on it and I nearly passed out. It was so strong. But now what I've started to notice is I've started to identify maybe some of the sweetness that lives behind the smoke. And that now when I nose Hinch, while there is that, that nose of very evident peat, it would be hard to ignore the sweetness behind it. Yeah, so like it, it, once you get past those strong peated flavors, smells, whatever you want to call them, you get into that, for me, it's like that uh, sweet, tar, smoky, woodish coming through from it on the nose, and it follows through into the palate at the same time, you know, and it's going to be those, it, it, it takes a while to be able to put your nose in it and get through it to find the fruit undertones, which is uh, survive the peat storm is the best way of putting it. You know, I get it on the nose, uh, but I get it more in the palate when we try it, you know, 
those um, licorice, you know, gentle mellows, so licorice there and the undertones. For me, you could go through this again like our 10 year old and you'll find something every time. I've now got to the point where I can find the peat easy enough. It's evident it's in the glass, but when you can explore the different parts of it, you know, this opens up at the same time. Stodger, we take a sip. Stodger, yeah. Let's get stuck in. That's me knocking home now. I'm just going to sit here till tomorrow and work Saturday with a bottle of Peter whiskey in my hand. Did you bring your sleeping bag? Um, I'll just turn the, still, uh, the stills on. It'll be warm enough so well. <laughs> there's a, the, to be fair, there's a sofa just over to my far side here, so we can sleep in our home. Happy days. Yeah. Like for, for, for me, um, as I said, once you get past that, survive the peat storm, you're into those fruit undertones, you're into that. I, I don't know for you personally, but I get a lot of licorice from it. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You remember, you used to get that licorice, the, the stick of licorice, and you used to dab it into your, your dib dab, that sherbet almost. Um, for me, that's just what my mm -hmm. mind screams. That's, that's my story personally. That's how I connect it to licorice. That's a great way to describe it. Um, you might not like the idea of a smoky, peated whiskey, yeah. but if you like licorice, maybe once you start to connect this other thing that you have a positive experience with to the whiskey, maybe that's the thing you come to. And I definitely get that black licorice with the, I get the black licorice with the little white cream, sugary icing in the middle. There's a story I have for that. And there's a couple of boys that were with me and we were on a tour for a whiskey tasting and Billy Latin from IDL was there. And he brought out this exceptional single cask and we're at the launch of it down at Blake's of the Hollow. And I'm sitting with my glass, he's just, He's two foot away from me and he's presenting. I'm sitting with my glass going with a really confused look on my face. Not that I didn't like it. I absolutely loved it. But he kind of looked at me and was like, mm, what's going on here? And Joe McGowan kind of went to me, is everything okay? And I, I went, there's just something I can't put my tongue on. And I'm wrong. And straight away I went on the defense and said, I am wrong. And Billy Lyon just said, no, tell me what you think it is. And I went, in my mind, this just reminds me of sherbet sweets when I was a kid. Just lemon sherbet. I don't know if people in America would get it, but in Ireland you used to go into a shop and had a big plastic jar and you had solid boiled sweets in that that were stuck together and you had to break them into a wee paper bag. And when I was a kid, my granda used to have these boiled sweets. And as soon as I smelled that and tasted that, that just brought back all these memories to me. This was that and I just went, and he went, I didn't get it straight away. And he kept talking and he came back to me and went, you weren't wrong, it's there, but it's your palate and your story that screams it out before anything else. And that's what will happen with this whiskey and other whiskey for it. It'll be very limiting for us to, to say it's a good whiskey, it's a bad whiskey. It would be unfair. Um, it's more like to me there's a curiosity around so many whiskies that i because i don't know enough about so many all whiskies that i want to know and i'm curious kind of i want to dive into it just like you sticking your nose yeah. in and not quite getting it and then somebody saying well maybe you're getting this or or, or or let's talk about it what are you getting that to me is the most interesting bit i don't think there's any good bad or indifferent whiskies there's just very different whiskies that lighter sit well with us or they won't but to me the fun is that dissection and listening to people find the notes and Trying to find yeah. it myself. It, again, we, we we touched on it earlier that that a the best way I can describe it, whiskey is a conversation. There's no doubt about it. Because I know fine rightly that I could be sitting at home trying a whiskey and I want to go and tell somebody about it. So the first thing I'll, I'll pick up Twitter, I'll pick up Instagram, and I'll message like Causeway and go, Have you tried this? You getting this? And that's what it comes from. So uh, Lauren's still awake then anyway. Lauren's uh drinking all kinds of whiskeys that remind her of drumsticks. If you've not had drumsticks, uh, those are great. Do you remember those when you were young? Drumsticks. Listen, giant, but the giant drumsticks of the way forward. Like they were, they were jawbreakers. I'm sure plenty of people along the way have lost their teeth from them, but what a sweet they were. Those are the best. Those are like um, milky, creamy. Here, let me pull up a picture of one here. They're the best. <laughs> I, I bet you didn't think you were going to be giggling drumsticks uh, on the lock-in tonight. Everything's on the table, like. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's okay, not fantastic. 
and Lauren's able to say that drumsticks is what um, she got from it straight away. Honestly, here's uh, here's what the drumstick is. So it's a, uh, it's like a, I don't know how much it costs now. I think it was like five pence when I was young, but now it's probably like sixty-five euros or something. Um, but it's these are little. You get them in every sweet shop in Ireland, and um, they're just hard, hard, chewy, like a hard, chewy marshmallow, but I don't, but kind of creamy. How would you describe it? I, I think the way you described it is probably the best way of describing it. Um, <laughs> you know, if it's a cold day, you're going to break your teeth. If they've been sitting, like I've been guilty of it over the years, you know, you leave them sitting in your car on a warm summer's day and you come back and you're like, I'll eat it. And you, you go, it's like, you go to pick the wrapper off and it's all stuck together. It's and stuck. I, I'm going to put myself under the bus here. We've all done it. I guarantee everyone has had a drumstick or a starburst or something like that and you've left a bit of paper on it. <laughs> we've, we've how had, much paper oh, have we consumed over the years stuck yeah, to the streets exactly. <laughs> what I will say is Lawrence and I just throwing herself under the bus because at her next tasting I'm going to bring drumsticks and just make sure that everybody's aware so it's fresh wet gravel freshly painted curb stones and drumsticks you're adding to your, your repertoire of offbeat uh, tasting profiles yeah but it's a testament to lauren that at her at her tastings lauren does a very good tasting and if i can take even 10 percent of what she puts across to the people i'll be doing well and it was you know i i think it was at one of her tastings of belfast whiskey week it actually was belfast whiskey week and me and the sidekick phil from causeway you know might have had a couple of drinks in us and the audience was a bit quiet for just a wee tiny bit and we yeah. just thought We'll have a bit of fun here and fair play to lauren she took it very well and unfortunately it's an ongoing joke um now <laughs> At some stage, uh, i'll probably get in trouble even more for it i love hearing people's notes i love people talking about and I, long before i got into whiskey i was always fascinated by um when i worked in hotels and bars listening to wine experts describe wine and talk about the fact that they're getting the the notes of the fumes of the outboard engine of a motorboat. I'm like, ah, lads, come on. And then I started to realize, no, those are just notes and smells they're familiar with, and they're transferring that to what they're getting there. And I'm just, I remain fascinated by what people can detect. And um, I think it's within all of our capabilities, but we're not fully tuned into it because we're expecting whiskey when we're maybe maybe we should be looking for our pineapple or our honey or our caramel and we're but we're first going to the whiskey side of it there's a whiskey um that is on the market that was put in front of me and somebody said one note and i can now never get past it and the note was pineapple i physically every time i drink that whiskey now all i get is pineapple and i wouldn't have got it until that one person said it I don't eat pineapple and um, I don't really drink pineapple juice. So it's not something that my sensory panel understands. But the times that I have had it and he has said it, it just went, oh, there we go. And it's like, I could kill the person for it, but that's it's a gift though, that, they've given, that they've given you that gift that now you'll never forget it. No, I just did the other people now for sheer madness at the same time. Or is there a right time to be drinking a peated whiskey or does it fit in with just the same as any other whiskey? There's no moment for a peated whiskey. Listen, I could have that tomorrow with McKellogg's cornflakes if I really want it. Um, is, there, is there a whiskey for the time of the day? I guess, you know, there's whiskeys for cocktails, there's whiskeys for sipping. You know, you might want to put our small bats and our five-year-old into a cocktail when you're out for a couple of the drinks. And then when you come home at the end of the night, one before bed might be the 10-year-old neat. It might be the peated. Yeah, it, 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 it's personal opinion at the end of the day, but there's, there's no wrong. Um, if you want to drink whiskey on a rainy day, sitting on the edge of a pier, by all means do it. If you want to drink 10-year-old whiskey in complete sunshine in Jamaica, who's to say you're wrong? It's it's a category that it, it's whiskey is a versatile drink. It can be used in many different ways and it has many different possibilities. I'm, there was a question came in earlier about whiskey regions in Ireland, and I want to pull up here. Let me see if I can do this. So I want to show people where Hinge Distillery is. So let's let's try and see if we can play with that. Is this your um, cork, not cork map? 
No, this is, I'm going to go very impressive here. You're going to be blown away here now. Look at this. Look, we're in, here we are now in San Diego, right? Oh, he's the got the Google Earth I got Google Earth up here. So now we're going to go to, oh, this let's is, go to Bell, Bell and Hinge. Is this your map? No, or is this Google Earth? No, this is just Google Earth. Right, so here we go. We're going to Hinge Distillery. Woo! Correct. Okay, mad. Okay, so, so look. Yeah. You're you're not far from Scotland, right? Let's, let's no. angle this around here. At its shortest points, it's it's thirteen miles away. So if you go up to the north of Ireland, up towards Bushmills, that direction, you you know you you could probably jump from Ballycastle over to Isla. You know, it, you can see it on a you can see the Mullican Tower, you can see Isla on a clear day, you can see Campbelltown. You know, we are cousins. We're Celtic cousins at the end of the day. You know, th th these regions were once together you know when how we talk, are there so many more regions for whiskey in scotland than ireland do you think um who's to say there wasn't regions here before but it might not be as well documented um just over time that they've been able to diversify they've been able to establish what they want to do their characteristics and Ireland at the minute is potentially on that, that 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 path. You know, I currently sit on the Tourism Northern Ireland Board and the IWA, Irish, Irish Whiskey Association. And currently in Northern Ireland, we're just we're now talking about shall we create a whiskey trail in Northern Ireland? But you could possibly be even maybe if you say Ulster, the guys up in Donegal have peat that is completely different to peat in the Warren Mountains. You know, the heather factor that comes in. But I guess. It's probably being lost over the years that you had Bush Mills and you had IDL keeping Ireland afloat. Now with these new distilleries coming on board, they're going to have many different characteristics. Whether it goes regional or it might just be completely different altogether. You can go by province, you can go by county. You know, we are on the renaissance of Irish whiskey. It is growing. Thirty six distillery. So I think it's thirty eight now actually. Um, yeah. We are we're finding our feet, and in time we will get it right. And if regional characteristics work, we'll go for it. You know, <clears throat> discussion. We don't. Have. It's interesting seeing the likes of Sleeve League Distillers in um, in Donegal yep. rekindling that approach to that smoky style of whiskey that would have been made historically, because the fuel source in the west yep. of Ireland predominantly were. They wouldn't have had access to electricity and they it would have been slow to get coal they that's how they they dried their their barley and now there's a move back to maybe heroing honoring and then advancing in, into kind of today's world that that process that approach that now will start perhaps to establish johnny gall as a peated whiskey region perhaps because of sleeve league um but we don't yet have very many mature distilleries in Ireland. You talk about 38, 39 distilleries in Ireland. I think is it 15 of those have fully matured spirit in the marketplace. So we don't yet have a maybe a, a sense of what a spirit can taste like from all regions of Ireland yet because there's many sourced whiskies and things like that. So I'd say that kind of future is still ahead of us to see do the microclimates in Kerry and Cork affect things differently than the microclimates in Leitrim or Johnny Gall, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's 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 going to be a very interesting. We touched on it earlier. It's going to be a very interesting three, four, five, six years down the line for these distilleries. You know, I don't know what age we'll release it at. Do you know what I mean? But there is you you could possibly say that there's 25 distilleries now in Ireland that all the next number of years are going to be booming with their own dislike. Like we've seen what happened with Dingle. As soon as Dingle came out with their own, whoa, because they were the first to do it outside the big boys. Teeling then came on down the line, you know, and you're going to have the likes of Liberties, you're going to have the likes of us, you're going to have the likes of Eknaville, you're going to have the likes of Sleeve League. It, it's, it's going to be one hell of a journey for us, one hell of a party it's going to be in a number of years, and I cannot wait to be part of it. And you and Lauren are going to be painting the plane to bring us all over. Listen, I hope to be sitting here with grey hair. Not that I've got enough of it anyway, but I hope to be sitting here in 10, 20 years' time, tasting the whiskies that we're making and possibly still talking to stories and sips that have went global. 
Even Wait, are you telling me that in 20 years' time, I have to still be doing this lock-in in 20 years' time? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> uh, you know, Zoom's opened the world up. Now, you might be locked in a bar in Belfast. Like, who's to say in 10 years' time you do the lock-in live from here? That's it. Would you be the happy now if you could spend the rest of your life working in whiskey? Yeah. I, if I spent the rest of my life here, because I know there's going to be a lot of challenges that come along the line and a lot of possibilities, um, I put a lot of my time and passion in the thing, and when I get going at it, there's no stopping me, and it's probably a detriment to me that I don't go home and turn my brain off. You know, I go home and I open up my work laptop, I open up my emails, and I think about what's the next photo I'm going to be. I'm very, very lucky, and I know how privileged I am to be one of the first members of this distillery and the legacy that we are creating. And if, for whatever reason, my time ends tomorrow, I can say wholeheartedly I have enjoyed every minute of it, and it's been a passion and a privilege, but I hope to God that I get to spend X amount number of years. You know, for me personally, these here are just the start of my personal journey. You get the likes of Iron and Head Distillers that um, create the whiskey, and you get the likes of brand ambassadors that get to go out and shout about them. But how often do you get the likes of myself that has went from a whiskey nerd to a brand manager that gets to design, you know, all of our content and design is done in-house. How often would you get that? You know, you get a lot of the stories that might do a yeah. bit, but for us, everything's done in-house. The only thing that we don't do, and we might do, because the only thing we don't do is print our own labels. But Terry Cross comes from a printing background. He really? is very well known in Ireland. That's Delta Print and Packaging is what he's known for. He made his name in that. That's why he became OBE, you know, Dr. Terry Cross, OBE for what he done. And no doubt, if he can, he will put a printing machine somewhere on his property that we print our own labels. I want to be part of that. I want, I want to be part of it. Well, there is a tradition. And first of all, that is um, how many people in their lives can say, I'm doing a thing that I want to do for the rest of my life, or I want to be in this place, moving through different roles uh, for the rest of my life. What a, what a gift and a privilege that is. So you're very lucky uh, for that. There is also a tradition especially amongst, I mean, the two oldest distilleries, the longest operating, Middleton and Bushmills, there's a tradition in those distilleries that once you get in, you don't get out. You don't want to get out. I mean, there's people working there 30, 40 years. Ms. Billy Lighton, what's he, 44 years maybe with, with yeah. Irish distillers between Bushmills and Middleton now? Um, and and Helen McCollin. And even Seamus Laurie, you know, that that's someone that I when was doing my whiskey blog that I would have went and listened to a million times. I have seen him in person, but he's been around in this game with on you know John Cashman, what a mind he is. <laughs> I mean, you can pick the phone up with that guy any day of the week and he'll talk to you. Um, whether that's me down the line and I take a different role in the company, I don't know, but I have been very pr privileged to come in for the, you know, I, I come in doing a touch on another three months um freelance. And if I would have left after those three months, that would have been the biggest tick in my CV ever. Who would have thought Whiskey Jack would have became the person that done this and the three months then have now turned into two years and hopefully that turns into 20 and do you I mean, it that, is. the way i, I want mean, to put it, ways. i want to make sure that i'm still here that when i open my nkia doing cask that it's as old as me basically do you know what I mean? I want <laughs> in 30 years time whatever it is and sipping it there are many worse ways to make a living and live a life than doing a thing you love and if that's sipping on a bit of whiskey meeting you never, you honestly, never work a day in your life if you love it no, you don't. And the, the people we're meeting here, Lauren said it great there. She just said, like, um, like a lock-in in person is the dream. This group is just lovely. And this group is one of many groups. There's many others out there. And, and the people you meet through them, just they'll change your life. Like, I know my life has changed from the people I've met through this, and I think we're only getting started. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be unreal to – yeah, and look, maybe we will see there in 20 years. Maybe there will be a 20-year lock-in. Who knows? 20, 20th no. anniversary lock-in, return to Hinch. I'm hoping to see your turtleneck at Dublin this November. <laughs> it'll it'll hide my increasingly wrinkly old neck. The older I get, the turtleneck will hide the wrinkles. <laughs> I, hope, I honestly think this year at Dublin Whiskey Live, um, you need to have your own stand for merch for turtlenecks. As soon as you walk in, you know when you walk in the door to Whiskey Live and you get your, your <laughs> there, you, you, the next thing needs to be, there we go, we've sorted it. I've just done your marketing for you. You get your two glass and you get your whiskey live yeah. turtleneck. That's it. It's perfect. Why not? Um, that's it. Listen, 
we, we, we have to make it we have to make a shilling wherever we can we have to pick, we have to keep the lights on and if they don't let you in sure enough you can do it in the car park outside <laughs> i do want to do something with like a getting a little glass topper or something like that's a turtleneck glass yeah. topper i think that would that could be an interim move in the meantime let's be honest you have created a brand with stories and tips so what you got you know it started out with a couple of couple of things you're now into well i know your turtlenecks are sold out online but you're into your glasses you know you're doing these lovely packages that you're now sending out to people like gift boxes so fair play to you and you you've done you've taken your passion and now turned it into this well, it's all about the people, isn't it? You're meeting just the nice people. You want to you want to do more things with them and find ways to enjoy whiskey together. Um, peated whiskey is still interesting to me, and I'm I have so much more to do in it. Like I'm sipping away here, and I I'm enjoying it. Like I'm liking it, but I'm liking the crack and the chat as well. And I'm trying to pick up. Like, what am I picking up? Is there a spice? Is there I'm picking up some pepper? I'm picking up some sweetness. I'm going to need more hand-holding to get fully into this peated journey, you know? Yeah, well, listen, you get yourself over here, and I'm sure all the distilleries will take you through their peated and hold your hand dearly. And if you don't drink it, we'll drink it. That's fair enough. Oh, what a, what a tough life. Come over, come over to Ireland and have some distillers force whiskey into you. That'd be very tough. <laughs> <laughs> there could be worse things, couldn't there? Um, Lauren wants the stories and sips whiskey bar. Yeah, we'll we'll open it up in um, up in Bushmills, beside the distillery. I'm I'm, t I'm tempted just to quickly go on to the the what do you call the website here and patent that one trademark it. Thirty five quid in that wine bar. <laughs> I have every domain bought up around stories and sips. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Stories and sips turtleneck. We'll we'll get a stories and sips turtleneck. Mark wants the uh, logo embroidered on the neck of it. Uh, we're going to do it. We'll do it. Just for the crack. Just for the laugh. Um, Barry's created a refuge for all of us. <laughs> yeah, we're all refugees. Whiskey refugees is what we are. Um, listen to me. It is now 2.34 in the morning. You are locked in a distillery. You're the luckiest of all of us. Um, you're sitting with three stills and 47 washbacks and, uh, behind you. And I don't think you million. could be in a, more, a couple of million pounds of whiskey yeah outside the bag don't forget about it Jeez, you, <laughs> you couldn't be in a more beautiful distillery i thought that um pierce lyons was the most beautiful distillery in ireland until you gave us the tour honestly hinch is stunning stunningly beautiful listen every distillery is beautiful barry and they've all got a story to tell it just so happens that this is now my story to tell and it's probably one of the latest stories to tell and with no doubt you've got the likes of clarney and all that are currently telling their story um whenever they're built but yeah, listen, I, I really am humbled when the likes of yourself and people leave comments going beautiful with the story. And it was being a privilege to show you around tonight. And I can't wait until some of the people that are on this and people in the local area. You know, one of the big things for me is I really want to open this story up to the local community. The local community have done us very proud and supporting us. So, yeah, the ginger peated cocktail was a fantastic cocktail that um, Gareth Shaw actually made for us. And it's peated whiskey with like lemon juice, a couple of other things in it. But what happens is it's got your peated at the bottom, and you've got your top of your cocktail. And when you sip it, it's like that citrus flavor. And when you mix it, it just this smoke just comes straight through to the top. And I remember standing in Michael Stewart's bar at the time, and when we were doing a cocktail shoot, and everybody just looked at each other and goes, "I'm guessing we're drinking these uh, rather than taking photos." Was it hickory? Was there any hickory, any bacon or anything? No. Um, it might have been garnished with a bacon, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Michael, happy birthday again to you, uh, 33 years again, and uh, you, you, you did right. well getting the hickory in here 47 times. We mentioned hickory enough to get people's attention. People I'm are shocked. going for their bacon. <laughs> um, do you, so you've been on, you, you've watched this lock in a few times, you've seen the crack, you've seen what happens. Yeah. Typically at the end of the night, people are like, give us a song. Give us an old dance. Would you play an old tune? Have you a, a, a drum or a guitar? Where do you yeah. land on this, Jamie? Because you're not getting out lightly. I can't do a single thing, and I'm probably one of the worst at remembering their thing. So that's why when I sing, I, I just kind of wanted, I had seen you having musicians on, but what I kind of wanted to do was get the guys from here to just give us a flavor of Belfast. And like we have a really good mic here, so we could probably tell if Michael's still listening, he, He's welcome to come round in here and 
I think Michael writes some of his own music, so if he wants to come around, he wants to take this camera and the microphone, by all means, come around here. Yeah, so I saw it. Michael, was, he was heading out the door with a, yeah. with a wash back on his back. I saw him dragging a wash back through the, the double doors. I know where my talents are in, Barry, and it's with a camera in hand, but definitely not with, not with this. Hey, hold on a minute, Lauren. She wouldn't give us one either. So, um, Maybe Lauren no. could come on. The two of you could do some kind of duet now. We'll bring Lauren on. Lauren, I'll send you the link. You can join us. Right. Well, fair enough. What we'll do then is in another lock-in, me and Lauren will write a song and we'll, we'll, we'll call it uh, Fresh Wet Gravel. But no, it's just what I wanted to do tonight was sort of like some of the songs the guys had sang there was very much um, Star of the County Down. God, she's still awake. <laughs> fair play to Charlotte. Um, and don't no be singing. Doubt. She, know, she knows your singing ability better than anybody. And she says, no, don't yeah. do it. <laughs> uh, well, we'll not. Uh, I've already embarrassed her once in the middle of um, Bournemouth with uh, Westlife full blast. Is the best way of putting it. So, <laughs> no, we're yeah. not going to put you on the spot. Um, you've been a, a fantastic uh, host at Hinge for us tonight, and um, just what a great tour! I'm dying to see the place, dying to see it, uh, and I know so many others are as well. We've had a chance to try three uh, great whiskies. And I know so many went out and bought them. I'd love to get your thoughts on them as well. Put, post them in the group tomorrow, tonight. Yep. Share your pictures, share your thoughts, give your feedback. Um, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. It's what you like is right. So share with us. And um, yeah, the first chance we get, we'll be over there knocking on the door. We might not be there at 2 o'clock in the morning, but we'll, we'll be there sometime anyway. Barry, I just want to say, uh, privilege being on the show, and thank you for your time as well. Um, and continue to spread the word of Irish whiskey across America, please. I'll keep doing it. I'll, Chris, I'll keep doing it. Chris says you're a ledge bag. Ledge bag is a great term. Ledge bag. Appreciate it. Thank you. Slasha. Um, Jamie, go to bed. You've you've done Hinge Proud and you've done Dr. Terry Cross Proud. Do you know what? I was sitting thinking to myself, I, I, I'll tell the truth. I finished a really enjoyable day at work. Immensely proud day at work. Launching crafting casts. So humbled by it. And I went home and had a nap for an hour because I knew I was going to be tired. But I'm now sitting hyper. And I could continue going, but I know that this place needs to be locked up. And I know the security guard's probably looking in the window at me going, you said you were going to wrap this up a while ago. So, yes, <laughs> I got it wrapped up. And it is thank you to Terry Cross, and it is thank you to the production guys and all for letting me come into the distillery at midnight and use the venue. Well, uh, cheers to Dr. Terry yeah. Cross for the investment. Cheers to you, Jamie, and cheers to the lads for emptying the room of whiskey tonight and singing a few songs. And uh, yeah. just, you'll, you'll have to come back to us again. And uh, no doubt, we'll, do we'll be back. Well, no doubt. Maybe what we'll do um, down the line is we'll once Craft and Cast starts down, we'll get that over to you and see if anybody can find them and maybe do the second part. And lovely, you know, once the new makes out there because we are going to let people try our new make. We aren't going to have that. I can see the boys there. Oh, yeah, I see people. Yeah. I, I see bodies. I think the guitars are away. Or else I would tell them to come in and give us one final thing. Do you want to? Do you want to chat for a second and see if we'll do us something? Yeah, go on. So yeah, yeah. listen. Get the lads there. Yeah. yeah, lovely. After all the whiskey, they uh, they fill their pockets with. Uh, the least they can do now is come and give us a last tune. All right, pour yourselves another whiskey, everybody. We're we're in for one more. Jamie's going to. Grab them. He said, we paid you for four songs, but we need a fifth. <laughs> if they were smart, they'd have run faster. Just all the whiskey weighing them down. <laughs> uh, what a great night at Hinch. Uh, I didn't get, I didn't even know what the distillery looked like before, a half hour before we went live tonight and uh, was blown away and couldn't wait then to press go live so that everybody else could see it. And Jamie's been a great host and a great, um, he's a great ambassador for Irish whiskey and well liked and loved in Ireland and for good reason and very kind to people who have questions and always great with his time. And I've enjoyed uh, spending time with him in the past. So uh, looking forward to getting there in person and hopefully you'll all, you'll all join me when we do get there. But in the meantime, I think we might have a musician sneaking back in maybe two of them Jeez, there's lots of running going on in the background there we're back barry he's going to come in and he's going to give us one final song so he is so great stuff me i'm going to say slatcha privilege thank you for your time and um, we will end the night with michael and dominic give us a wee awesome give us a wee shot <laughs> we're in the face <laughs> that's there's no getting ready <laughs> it's a nice green screen top quality you should have been in here all night jamie got the big screen all night <laughs> You wouldn't let us in. 
Great encore. You weren't expecting that. <laughs> I forgot to bring me a shot one, but I was I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers, everybody. Well, Fair play. Good Brilliant. end of the night, then, anyway. Great way to end the night. Perfect. Fair play. Yeah, right. Got you off the hook. <laughs> Once again, Sláinte, sir. Sláinte, Jamie. Yeah. Thanks a million. We really appreciate yeah. you. Thanks so much. Well, that's me off the bed. So good night, everyone. Good night, Jamie. We'll see you. We'll talk to you in the group. And uh, everyone, give Hinch a follow. Give Jamie a follow. And uh, harass him and haunt him to find out when it's coming, when the whiskies are coming to your state. And we'll talk about it more in the group as well. So uh, cheers for the great tour. Thanks, Dave. Guys, listen, Slancha, good evening, good morning, whatever it is. So, <laughs> no Jamie. Uh, enjoy whiskey, Slancha. Good man. Talk to you later. Cheers, Jamie. Amazing. What a night. Time flies. We're what three hours in now, and it feels like we're about ten minutes in. We're very lucky. I say this every week, every time we have a guest on, but we are. We're increasingly lucky um, that we just get some fantastic guests to join us and who are willing to give us their time, their talents. They're willing to go into a distillery at twelve o'clock at night, stay there till two or three o'clock in the morning, and share their passion, share their interests, share their knowledge. And we're all the richer for it. And I think we're, we're smarter for it. We're more entertained for it. And we're that little bit closer to Ireland because of it. And I, for one, and I know you share that sentiment as well, um, feel very privileged and very lucky that we get to have such great people to join us. Uh, so that's it. That is the end of our night. I'm not going to top a Van Morrison song. I'll let the lads um, leave us musically with that one. 
and uh and that's it that's the end of our lock-in we have uh yeah we're, hit, we're almost three hours we don't need to go to four hours come on we all have homes to go to and families to see and pets and children to feed so we must go and do that and we'll, we'll, we'll try and strike some kind of a balance of a friday night but thank you all for your company thank you all for your community and thank you all for being such great participants in our facebook group and our community and if you're not already part of that community please please come and join us irish whiskey fans of america we'd love to have you in there we're going to hit eight thousand members there in the next week or two and a lovely bunch of people uh thank you so much everybody and uh Slauncha, we will see you over the next few days in our group uh more lock-ins coming lots more planned we're not going anywhere we're here to meet on a friday night virtually until we can do it in person so thanks johnny thanks martin mark maureen Brian and everyone who's hanging out still at this time of the night. I raise my glass to you. I'm going to have some dinner. Slaunch you all. Good night. <laughs>